don't know what her squeeze bottles or I don't know which ones are which, man. But I'm looking around for some soap, and I'm like, man, what am I gonna do? So I, uh, I went back and I, I like ran out and grabbed my dick and balls because I was like, what if Greg's in the house walking around? I don't want to fucking show. He's like, what are you doing? Yeah. (laughs) So uh, I grab my dick and balls and I go in the hallway and um i look in the hallway closet where we keep our like toiletries and the only soap that was in there was erica's bar soap so i was like fuck it i'll try it like <laughs> dude she's got something going there miss she had coffee like in that shit and it was like scrubbing off what? all the bullshit and little beans of coffee and like even ground up coffee i was like man this is pretty Dang. tight so shout, I feel shout, that's- very exfoliated is what so I'm you are you are you are freshly saturated with some some Calaveras Rivers Farm soap. Oh yeah, that's too. It, that is. Some I got to throw stuff, a shout man. out to uh, uh, Calaveras Rivers Farms Chapstack. It's Chapstick. Chapstack. Uh, son, it's good yeah, stuff. We were all we we're all together there uh, in Elk River Fourth of July. Went to the Big Cedar. I looked at my son's lips. He looked like a fucking crackhead. His lips were all <laughs> soaked up, cracked, and dried up, and. Uh, Someone had uh, some of uh, Erica's, the Calaveras Rivers Farm chapstick. I smudged that across his lips. That was like the fastest working shit I've ever seen in my life. His lips were instantly just, just, just full. full yeah, life. Bobby, what is up, up brother? Was good. What is up? What's up, Bobby? We're shouting out your wife's soap and chapstick, bro. Yeah, that the chapstick was great. We used it the whole trip. Like that kept our lips unchapped. I, I ended up getting some Huckleberry chapstick from the general store. That stuff smells delicious and it tastes delicious, but you lick it off really quick. You know, fucking a, bro. I put it on my ball sack. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's how you I get do chapped it. down there. Keep it fresh. Keep it fresh for Victoria. You know what I'm saying? Get a little huckleberry. I say, hey, girl, you want some? You want some huckleberry slurry? You want some huckleberry, huckleberry dingleberries? Is what you're offering? Yeah, I put it. I put it on like mid afternoon at peak heat of the day. That way, it gets all sappy and stuff in my sweat. And then, you know, and then my sweat puts a little salt in it, and then it just turns into this nice huckleberry salt, sacky syrup. Sacky syrup, man. You are really getting deep tonight. <laughs> what is up, everybody? This, I'm my trying to get. Huckleberry ice cream is just damn, man. It's amazing. It's so fucking good, huh? I don't know dude, what it is about it. I can't stop it. thinking oh. about that shit. Man. Amazing. It's amazing. Amazing, man. That's why everybody waits in line for it because it's worth it. I, I oh, thought we already oh, did yeah. 65. You sorry, 65 sorry, again? Sorry. It, I thought it updated and it not. Update. It should say the right thing now. Oh, 66. Episode 66. We're almost there, Chad. We're almost Six, there. 600 episodes from Greg's. Uh-huh. <laughs> Greg Six, will do episode 666 with us. Yeah. <laughs> Man. So... We we just got back from Idaho, one of the best fucking times of our life. Fourth of July was fucking amazing, brother. We got down on some guitar. We went to the backwaters. We fucking hit Big Cedar. And we put on the fucking, the best fireworks show I think we've done. Like, oh, yeah. by far. Yeah, yeah. it was amazing. Yeah. And, and it, man, it, it was so, it was, it was so fun to, uh, I was happy that I took Friday night off. I wasn't happy the night it happened when the kids are crying and I'm fucking watching somebody else's kids. Not voluntarily. I was putting mine to bed to go out. And then I'm next thing I know, an hour and a half later, I'm still watching two kids cry. But outside of that made me go to bed because I was so tired. I was like, man, I ain't going out and getting drunk now. Because I wasn't drinking the whole time. I was being an idiot. Mm -hmm. I should have drank. But anyway, to wake up fresh that Saturday morning, be able to eat some food, watch you guys kind of come around, see my mom all fucked up, hung over on the couch, covered in towels like a fucking blanket, you know, and <laughs> like see her around. But then that trip to the waters felt great, man. Dude, so I was, I was pretty trip. happy about that. Oh, that was so good, good man. Trip, actually, yeah. fuck, it was so nice. And yeah, but for, for the listeners, they, uh, uh, they all drove up a thousand miles. You know what I'm saying to uh, the beautiful mountains up here in Idaho, which which are full and there's no residency left. So sorry to all yes. those that didn't make it, but we're yeah. full. So yeah, <laughs> yeah they're not <laughs> accepting they, uh, new members. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're not accepting new members. But uh, um, and then you know it was uh, 
honestly, probably the roughest, the roughest part of the trip was Greg's truck had a really hard time. You know, it's his truck's a little skittish from California, and every time a firework yeah. went off, his alarm just started going off. And you see his fucking truck just shaking. He's like, I've never been around this much freedom in my life. Like his poor little truck was just scared the entire time. I felt bad. I felt bad. It was. It I, made it through though. It, made it, through. it was so fucking funny though that it happened like multiple times where firework go off and his truck's going off, and I'm like, oh poor, fuck, dude. Poor Greg. Of course, it had to be Greg's truck too yeah. because you know Greg hangs out in the Bay Area a lot, yeah. and you know he's he's really all yeah. about his California life. And, Oh, and, and wow, and, I don't know, Greg. I feel like Greg took it in pretty good. And shout out to Greg's girlfriend, Jasmine, who's probably one of the sweetest person people I've ever met in my life. That's the most I've ever hung around her, Greg. And she, yeah. you got yourself a winner, man. She's a sweet person. Well, of course, Greg. I mean, fuck, Amanda's fucking one of the sweetest people I've oh, ever yeah. met in my life. So, I, I mean, it was real. Well. Yeah, I mean, it was, I told you guys at the Big Cedar, like, to be honest, man, it was, it was so easy that nothing was like forced or, or, or not that it not not that it ever has been with you guys, but you know it was just I don't know it was just easy, man. It was so fun and like you said when you repeat it, like sometimes I kind of didn't really realize how much we did, you know. Like it was really cool, and then you know stopping in John and Eva's camp on our way to the waters and back yeah. to have some beers and yeah, <laughs> dude, it, going to the swimming hole. I mean, everything about that trip just worked out perfect. I mean, yeah. one of the highlights of my life, I mean, I just got a shout out to my group of friends, you know. I have a fucking amazing group of friends. You know, they'll they'll do anything for you. You know, if you need a beer, they'll fucking give you a beer. If you need a hand in anything, they'll they'll be there to assist you unless you're choking. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh the highlight of the trip the highlight of the trip is we experienced two near-death experiences and believe it or not they weren't in the fireworks show and oh, yeah. no they I, weren't in the fucking <laughs> thousands of dollars fucking lighting <laughs> off running back and forth mortars that, that the craziest no, that show we've ever lived no that was, i mean and and, and greg doing it on mushrooms too to, to yeah. be exact <laughs> but yeah nothing nothing oh, goes wrong that time about. but but god damn if i want to have lunch and i i'm just hungry as shit not thinking my parents have always had restrictions on my food because i'm a choker <laughs> and i fucking can't eat mozzarella sticks I've choked on a lot of those throughout my life. You should have taken it down. The Dave's beach. like, I, oh, Dave's like, I wanted to be gay so bad my whole life, but I just couldn't get that dick down. Dude, you should have brush my teeth. I'm like puking in the morning. I have a really bad gag reflex. Cannot fucking oh, take man. a deep throat to save my life. I mean, <laughs> if tried, I'm like, if I get like fucking kidnapped by a group of fucking gay guys and they all look at me and they're like, fucking let mm -hmm. us, you know, fucking, whoa. Well, suck my dick i'm not gonna be able to fucking do anything because i'm just gonna be fucking puking and it's horrible man no i'm like fuck no they're gonna kill me they're gonna fucking... oh my god yeah so there's I, I mean it's horrible dude but i've always choked on stuff didn't chew the steak and it got lodged i i'm sitting in the driver's seat of a car and I'm choking to death. And I look at all my friends who are all CPR certified and have children of their own that choke and, and, <laughs> and different things like that. And they're all just looking at me. And Greg's asking me, are you okay? Chad's asking me, do you need the Heimlich? That's a yes and a no, but you guys don't know the difference because I'm choking. And you're also running away from Chad. I, gotta, I, I have to say, though, there is a, a great and powerful God and and the favor of the lord has always been upon me they, to, to, dave looked like look it okay they're all in the car i'm at the window dave dave looks like he might have ate something hot and like i said it's my first instinct ate something hot. What that's what you look like, like, like ah, ah, you were like ah ah like you were breathing so it was like ah we ah, were at that cedar like, tree for like an hour bro what would be hot i know I, you just started eating food. I thought maybe you put Tabasco all over it or something, right? Yeah. And he goes to get out. And at first, I do think he's choking. And I'm like, my insane. I was like, it would have been so much worse because my fingers were so dirty. But see, being around my son, I just fingered the food out. Well, I was going to put my finger in Dave's mouth to get that steak. And then he kind of got up. And I'm like, okay. And then he like 
sets his food down and I'm like, Hey, are you good? And he's like, he's giving me the thumbs up. Like, Fortunately, this fucking thumbs up comes full circle. Cause now I get what he was actually doing, but he's like giving me the thumbs up and I'm like, fuck. All right. And then finally, and this fucking gigantic chunk of steak comes out. Like they call them bite sized steaks, but it, you got to cut them into like four or five bites. Like that ain't no bite sized fucking steak, you know? And yeah, I'm my, like, Jesus my, Christ, my, Dave, my why don't you fucking chew it, bro? Like, I'm looking at the new ones and I'm looking at the one he coughed out. I'm like, there's no difference. Like there's no difference than what he just tried to swallow. <laughs> and Dave's like, thanks for the fucking Heimlich, man. God damn it. You know, he's fucking traumatized, choking, you know, and I, yeah, I, I, just so you know, I'm also CPR certified too, Dave. So, so I mean, everybody <laughs> is medically certified. So <laughs> survived. Yeah. now the shitty thing was, I go through that experience and I'm like, fuck, dude, I just want soup and mashed potatoes for dinner. Like, I'm good. <laughs> you know, I just almost died here. And fucking Chad's like, all right, time to cook these steaks. I'm like, fuck, man. Like trying to avoid steak. at all costs going to town on these steaks because I, I don't want to choke again. So I'm over here and I'm filling water balloons with the kids and everyone goes inside to eat. And I'm one of the last ones because I'm nervous and fucking go to wash my hands and I'm at the sink. Chad looks over at me. This guy starts walking up. And I'm like, this guy's making fun of me. Looks at me like, I, I mean, everyone in the room definitely thought you were like busting my balls, Chad. I don't think John, John's on the other side. Really, choke. He starts, I know. I'm like, this is the fucking repercussions of being a fucking smart ass all the time. I look at John. I'm doing the same thing. John burst into laughter like he's making fun of him <laughs> it was awful and and you come up no. to the only person in the room not cpr certified and ask for the high well because so i was telling dave i was like jay if you're fucking choking you got to give the international choke sign okay and then you know choke and then you got to turn your back to him so they can give you the heimlich so i've been choking now for about four like <laughs> a couple minutes at least trying i'm like and in my mind i'm like you got to be fucking kidding me. This is less than like three hours later. I'm now choking and I try to get a bottle of water and slowly sip it. Cause I'm like, I cannot. Okay. And I'm like, all right, I'm, 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 I'm fucking, I'm fucking choking. Like I'm so choking. <laughs> so I go over very calmly to Dave and I do the throat symbol. And he starts laughing. He's like, you making fun of me. And I look at John and I'm doing it to John. And John, <laughs> John starts busting up laughing. And Dave's like, he's fucking making fun of me. And I'm trying to say, for real, for real, for real. And, and I take another drink of water and then just <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and I I without hesitation, man, I'm there to save Chad. He goes, Oh fuck, he's serious. <laughs> <laughs> I do two to three pumps on the hind leg. That fucking piece of steak comes out, and it's the exact same size as the one I spit up. <laughs> fucking insane. Then, then I then I try to drink water. So it takes me like half an hour minimum to get the rest of the steak chunks out. So I had ate, like, basically I threw up every, I ate a whole steak in like a minute. And the bot, the first bite must've been what's wedged. Cause I remember feeling something go like, oh, funny in there. And I just kept pounding all the steak. <laughs> then I, Dave gets the one out. I go try to drink water. <laughs> It's all coming back out. I go outside. I'm choking. I get another steak chunk out. John's now making fun of me like Jesus Christ. I go around. I ended up puking out like six steak chunks before the one that was choking me finally went down. <laughs> Bro, you all had some cheap ass steak or a bad cook. Chad, you're cooked fucking those crazy, bro. Yeah, those were great, Dave. Yeah, they were Chad, fucking bomb steaks. That's why I you had to chew into them up. Tiny dime sized bites, dude, dude and they were, were perfect. Those were like great size, man. The size on those things was great. Yeah, those steaks and they were, were, fucking, were fine. And they were made. They were super tender, Anthony. All yeah. right. I mean, try to it's like fucking basically we were fucking trying to swallow a whole sausage, you know. If you <laughs> yeah, maybe yeah, a half right. a sausage, but it was fucking yeah. a lot. It was horrible. It was man. Fucking bad. But the odds of fucking both of us choking, and then I'm a smart ass, so everyone thinks that I'm fucking joking. Yeah. Like I look, I remember looking over, I'm like, I'm sitting here and I'm like. I'm fucking I'm about die. to pass out. Like I'm a fucking, I'm about to pass out 
where they're laughing because I'm always such a fucking smart ass. They think I'm fucking with them. I was like, this is God's karma. I remember looking over at Jack Jasmine. She sent like, oh shit. Like, no, he's for real. And it still was a couple seconds and Dave's like, oh fuck. <laughs> Chad's probably the only person I think to, John, to be like, hey, give me the Heimlich again. <laughs> like, I got some more shit in my throat. Yeah, yeah. That was pretty that cool, man. Sucked. But you did good, uh, Dave. You saved my life. I talked to See, Bobby I didn't, about that. I didn't save your life, but you nope. saved mine. You know what I mean? Nope, because I'm a godly man, Chad. <laughs> I'm a godly man. I, I, I believe in the good book. I, I follow it. Trust me, I ain't ever fucking with you about fucking nothing again. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. It's called the favor of the Lord, man, and I have it on me. Yeah, you, yeah, you had it that day, and He struck, struck down upon thee. Sometimes you fucks with great me. Like, vengeance hey, and furious anger. I'm gonna test you like Job in the Bible, and I'm gonna make you choke first, and then we're gonna make your friends fucking react and, and see how much they care about Dave. I found out exactly how much you guys care about me. So thank you, Chad, for being so <laughs> to the Heimlich, bro. No, but but <laughs> on a serious note, man, uh, I was talking to Bobby and he's like, when I was working in Florida, there was this big ass steakhouse that was hella good. And the ambulance would go there every single night, like without fail, because someone would be choking on steak. <laughs> I, I guess it's a common thing. I, I didn't know that was my first steak choking experience. But I know you could choke on mozzarella sticks for sure, but. Steaks, I mean, a whole new ball game for me, man. That was my that was first the, steak choking. So I was talking so much because Dave says my parents wouldn't let me eat cheese sticks. And I was I was talking so much shit at the Big Cedar. I said, we are making Dave a shirt next year. And it's going to say <laughs> Elk River, 4th of July, quote of 2021. I can't eat cheese sticks. Or my parents wouldn't let me eat cheese sticks. Yeah. Dude, they're dangerous. Like. I, I could think of like five experiences and one recent when I was in uh, Alabama, I choked on a cheese stick and I was like, all right, I ain't fucking with the cheese sticks no more. But it happens How about at least them once fucking a year. Cheese curds from you can't choke on those. I'll tell you that <laughs> from Tom. They were good, dude. Yeah. We put down, we got a fucking, I never heard of cheese curds in my life. They're like these deep fried cheese curds. We get a plate of those and we're drinking them and like drinking them basically. We all like eat a couple, but it's like after you eat like that third or fourth one, you get like fucking addicted, man. Yeah. Just start fucking putting them down. Yeah, they were garlicky too. Uh, but the downside about yeah. cheese curds is the next day they come out yeah. cheese turds. And, and <laughs> you know, those cheese bites come out exactly the same. That's, yeah. Well, that's a good thing about them cheese curds, though. She had them so small. It was like popcorn cheese curds. So, you know, even if they, they, they ain't going to gang back up in your body and link up and form one big gang, ganged up cheese yeah. curd, you know, they, they're going to be a bunch of little pebbles like they were. That was what was good. When, when you're drunk, drinking and drunk, I tend, I tend to scarf down food so I can see how easy it is to choke. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it was fun, man. But that, go ahead. That whole fucking, just that whole trip, man. It was so fun. And I mean, to, 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 uh, we got to record the one night and we got, yeah. what was, what was Greg's, I'm Greg's quote. So Greg, we, uh, had the recording set up, my podcast set up. We had three things, of headphones, uh, three mics. So we had a mic on Dave's guitar, a mic on his vocals and a mic on my guitar. I got headphones. Dave has headphones. Greg has headphones. We start playing and it's so funny because like Greg has a loud voice for mics, right? So we're playing this <laughs> shit and he's like, yeah, trying to have an eargasm. Like, it just, and then he wouldn't say nothing for like another couple minutes. And then like every time he spoke, it was pure gold though. But that was like the first thing you hear him say in this, like it's a 46 minute long, like recording that we just turned oh, wow. it on. And that's the first thing you hear Greg say, yeah. Trying to have an eargasm. <laughs> I was like, fuck yeah, man. <laughs> but dude, my my recording skills for that are so weak. When you listen back to it, it's like in the headphones, it sounded, it amazing. sounded good to me. When I play it back, it's like my guitar is super loud. You can barely hear your guitar and vocals. Like, really? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. It's like I'm just a smart ass. Like I'm trying to sabotage you and just just yeah. you know. <laughs> well, that's why I'm that I'm night. It, it was amazing. 
Yeah, I, I thought we had gold yeah, on that, I dude. I, I really did. I thought, man, now we're going to have a couple songs, like, or at least jam sessions or something good on there. And, of course, Chad. Yeah, I mean, it was just so unbalanced. Like, fuck, ow, God, ow, ow. That was you weird. Like, knee, oh. hand down, fuck. No, I was the, uh, like my fingernail right on the corner of the table. Very odd. Oh, odd smack, not a common smack. But no, but I listen back. There's some good stuff on there. I mean, but it just, it's just so unbalanced. Like, you know, it's like, damn it, man, damn it. But we're having fun. I mean, it was, it was a lot of fun. We haven't got to play like that in a while. So that was, that was pretty cool. Yeah, man. And, and you were, you were sounding fucking good too, brother. Like, yeah, something about when you and I get together and we're feeling it. Like, you're fucking right on with those man. fucking lead lead parts, man. I, I really, I, I I can't say enough about it. I love, I it's hard for me to find a musician that can fucking hit it all like on the right spots when I want to hear it on the right spots. You definitely fucking got <laughs> it, dude. You definitely got it. You're a fucking man, bro. You fucking holding the beat, singing the tune, putting the gospel in the fucking goddamn <laughs> music, man. If, if you playing, if you playing lead guitar and you can't feel that, you ain't got no feels. You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's just the way it is and and i think i think the the plan of having a big concert in the big red barn is genius i think dude i think that upper level right. dude is just going to be the right angle you know i i can see it now it's just... well it's going to be hard to like the hardest part about it you got to figure like is that we're going to be up there playing and we got to keep our women calm so that they don't just each lay down on the separate beds and start masturbating while watching us fucking do our damn thing. You know what I'm saying? Hey, we can put the curtains is, up in each section and just you know, get the, our own masturbation one, like, I play guitar in front of my wife, <laughs> masturbating the two curtains. Bobby, <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> but no one Chad, Chad's hey, going to hey, be like, hey, Dave, I'm going over there. Go no, I was gonna say that'd be Bobby. Bobby's like, "Is it time to switch yet, you guys? Are we switching?" Let me see your guitar and mic. This song, and, and, and I, girl. For this song, I feel like we should rotate. Yeah. <laughs> Here, Chad. You know what? That that you're right. You're right. He'd be tricky. I can't hear my guitar. Like, hey, I need to get over. How there. about? Yeah. What if I use your mic and uh, we switch guitars for this song? <laughs> and, and, and then the next song was. <laughs> Hey, oh, it's shit. gonna be a good show, man, and and we'll see how it goes. We we've, we've always been ready yeah. to play. We just haven't done it yet. Just we just need uh, Greg. Greg, supply us with chocolate, and I'm good. Hell yeah! Anytime, <laughs> anytime. <laughs> yeah, this motherfucker. Yeah, this is what he says, and I know I already know not to trust people like Greg. That you know, he doesn't. He doesn't. He does. He does a little bit more frequently than I do. So when he's telling me. Eat one. And this is the other thing you know. When you're looking at this little square, right? I'm going to say like an inch and a quarter by an inch. Inch and a quarter by an inch and a quarter, about half an inch thick. And his quote is, eat one, put you right where it needs to be. Eat more than that. I don't know what to tell you. I'm like, <laughs> first of all, two ain't that much more because this thing is so small. So the strength of one is obviously going to be high. I'm like, and you, you eat a lot more of these than me, so... I don't think I'm going to need a whole one. I was like, I don't think I'm going to do that. <laughs> so I split it in half. John ate half. I ate half. We go to the bar. John kicks way er first. And I'm dying laughing because when it did kick, I'm like, John looked at me and he goes, who the fuck eats a whole one of these? <laughs> He's like, oh, <laughs> he was so fucked up, dude. The, the, for the listeners, don't know anybody, John. He, yeah, he used to play baseball growing up, shit like that. This motherfucker don't watch baseball. He don't watch sports at all, except for like <laughs> UFC. He don't watch fucking sports. We're in the bar. It kicks. He's like, he's instantly laughing. I'm like, oh shit. I feel mine coming on, but I'm not there yet. I look over. I'm watching him. I'm like, oh my God. Hey, John. I'm like, John, John. He looks over. He's like, holy shit, man. I'm like, yeah, you good? He's like, yeah. I go, dude, you're just watching baseball for like five minutes. I mean, fixated like on fucking baseball. I'm like, bro, holy shit. And then, yeah. And from there it was all nothing but a fucking good time, dude. But he just could not stop dying laughing man it was so damn funny i'll tell you what man, walk you guys you guys worried me for like half a second i thought you guys were gonna fucking start kicking hard i didn't know you guys i thought you both ate your own i didn't know you split it at first like the smiles on oh. your guys' faces i thought you both ate your own i thought you guys were about to fucking start tripping 
That's why I was so happy. I didn't need a whole one. I'm like, dude, I mean, it was pretty strong. Like, and I've, I've been, you know, every three or four months I'll do some, you know, like I I've probably, yeah, I've done like, yeah, I've done them like twice this year, maybe, you know, but little bits and not in concentrated chocolate from like a lab, like meeting like a homegrown. Yeah, that, was a, that was the first time I did it since your plane flight uh, to Vegas. Since really? I, yeah, that was my first time. Greg oh, likes to shit. take him on plane flights. He says it helps he him calm breathe. down. Yeah, I like, yeah, what? I like on plane flight, yeah. You're so one. sadistic, bro. He <laughs> says it helps him calm down. Like, who the fuck oh likes my plane God. flights, first of all? And then who the fuck likes to take mushrooms on a plane? Like, all I want to do on a plane is sleep. That's it. Yeah. Just sleep till I, I, I land, right? It's fun. It's fun. Yeah. It's well, I was laughing. The first night, Greg gets there before Dave does. We meet up. Greg's, you know, he's buzzing and shit like that. He, uh, what is it? Ja Jasmine went to bed. Greg came back to the bar. I'm like, right on, man. He orders a, uh, some Maker's Mark. And I'm laughing because, I mean, you know, they pour there. So Greg has like a cup of wh straight up whiskey. <laughs> and we're fucking bullshitting. He's talking about he's going to go ride in the trails, go exploring by himself. And all I'm thinking is, God damn it. Fucking good thing there's EMTs in town because we're about to be scraping Greg's ass up <laughs> off the mountain. I know how this goes. He's like, no. Nah, no, nah, but I'll just go ride them by myself in the morning and get to learn them. I'm like, yep, that's exactly how it happens. That's exactly the, the number one rule up here is don't go riding by yourself because ain't nobody there for you when you wreck. Yeah. And I'm just thinking, God damn it, I'm going to be looking for Greg in the morning. And I'm watching this cup of whiskey. I'm like, I, I've got like, at this point, I'm like two, three beers in and like Greg's whiskey's got like a drink left. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me right now? Like he'd already been drinking. Then he just drank a cup of whiskey. I'm like, dude, I'd be flat on my fucking face right now. Like there is no way. And then, then he's kind of looking. He goes, all right. Sean ate for it one time. What a fucking that, champion. You know what? Greg told us that up there, Sean. And that's when I said no. Cause the first thing Greg's saying like, Hey, I got the first, the fr I mean, I don't even think it, we were five minutes in before Greg offered me the chocolates the first time. Like, Hey, just so you know, like the first, like the introduction was what's up chat it's pretty up here, by the way, here's what I have. Okay. I ate one. If you eat one, it's perfect. You know, you could probably eat two. I don't know what it's going to do to you. Sean ate four. And I'm like, okay, well, Definitely not going to do whatever Sean did. Fucking promise you that right now. I ain't trying to go to any fucking planet that Sean could go to. I got, I know, I know Sean could do some shit. And I don't think that I'm at 25% capacity of what Sean could do. So, and I found out I'm not, I'm at about a 12 and a half percent capacity. Yeah. I can't imagine Sean fucking four of those goddamn things. Did you eat them at once or did you spread them out? Yeah. That's a big question. We, we have to know. Cause I mean, those I could see intense. like three or four, Three or four hours later, I could have ate the other half. You know what I mean? Like, I felt I was perfect. Man, that three-hour high that I had, that was like, that What's was great? perfect. I had so much fun. What's huh? great about those is they're uh, super consistent the way they hit. So that's like, it's kind of nice. Like, you can kind of gauge like, hey, that's how it's going to be most of the time. And no, Anthony, that's not yes. nice. That's not, that's not fucking nice. God damn it. Th this that's is not nice the way they hit, chocolate. Greg. They hit like a fucking... <laughs> They hit like a fucking ton of bricks and they slowly <laughs> wear off. See, I like to like eat a cap and a stem and start to fill it. And then 40 minutes later, eat a cap and a stem. And then 40 <laughs> minutes later, because that's chocolate called. Pieces. Well, yeah, you'd have to, yeah, you'd be eating like fuck God. You could, if you, you couldn't even do Hershey kit, like you couldn't even do chocolate chip size pieces. I feel like I chocolate chip size pieces are going to still take. Maybe, maybe that would work though. Chocolate yeah, chip maybe. size pieces. Yeah, maybe that's what you got to do. I'll tell you what, my first yeah, I don't know, that's boring. My first time ever taking them, Sean gave them to me like before a comedy show. And it's the best way to do it. And I'm like, Sean, like how intense are these things? He's like, Well, they hit pretty good. And I'm like, Okay. <laughs> so he goes, eat half, and if, if you're not feeling anything, eat the rest. And I'm like, All right. So I eat half, right? And I, I think I'm not feeling anything, so I eat like another like half of the half so another quarter of it <clears throat> and dude all of a sudden it kicked and fucking i was tripping i was waiting for it to like go full into like visuals and anything at any second dude like i i learned my lesson then so when greg gave me that one in elk river and he's like eat the whole thing i ate three quarters of that thing and i felt perfect 
but <laughs> any more than that is too much, definitely. But then, well, poor Dave, he's trying to be a good friend. So I get I get two kids dumped on me. My kid, my kid, my kid is in bed basically. <laughs> Like five minutes, he's in bed. That's what we do. This is our normal weekend. I put him to bed. I go down to the bar. Like, like, I do it every weekend. Well, they're like, hey, can you, since you're, you know, putting Axel down, can you watch our kids for a little bit? We can go, you know, like 15 minutes. We're going to have a drink. I'm like, all right. Well, my kid's in bed instantly. And like, I'm like, and I mean, it, it ain't five minutes that, that one of them just starts bawling. I want my, so I'm like, fuck, I try to sit next to him. I try to cheer him up. I'm trying to cheer him up. Dave goes, Dave's high on shrooms. Dave goes, grabs his guitar, starts singing. I'm like, is that better, bud? He's crying, saying yes, yeah. but he's still fucking crying. <laughs> and I'm like, God damn it. And I don't, I wasn't thinking about the fact that Dave's high right now, right? I'm like, fuck. <laughs> so then he switches couch. And I'm trying to tell him, like, I'm stern, you know, like, I don't like, I try to cheer you up. And if I'm not cheering you up and you're going to keep crying, I'm like, fuck you then. You don't care about my good time. I don't care about yours, right? That's like where I'm at. You know, Uncle Chad is. If See, you I'm cry thinking Uncle Chad, Chad is about to scream at this kid for crying. <laughs> I, I was, I was, I was. I was, I was trying to keep my shit together because, because I was telling him, I said, keep it in. I kept, that's what I kept. So Dave's watching me, and I, Dave, I can see Dave looking at me like I'm the most heartless motherfucker because I'm staring at. Him. I said, hey, keep it in. I was like, crying is not going to bring your mom back. Crying is not going to be your, bring your mom back. <laughs> Poor kids. And I'm like, you need to keep it. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm like, keep work. it together because I knew if he loses it, he's going to start screaming shit. Then I'm going to spank his ass. I'm going to spank him. I'm going to be like, you want to fucking cry? You want to ruin my good time? I'm going to ruin your good time. And then you're going to make sure you don't ever fucking get babysit by Uncle Chad again because I whoop your ass. It was, and that's it, what. And then so, so his brother's doing pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. And then he fine. tries to get like, he tries to get his little brother some water, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> Dave's looking at me. He's like, "Bro, do you see this?" And I'm like, "Yes, yeah, I, I, I see it, Dave." And he's like, "Fuck, they're both about to lose it," and like he's like, "They're both like," mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, "Fuck," I'm like, second. "I'm like, I'm like, Dave, you need to go to the bar." He's like, "That's cool, bro." I'm like, "Dave." Get out of here. Go to the bar. Like, I'm looking at Dave's eyes. I'm like, fuck, dude, Dave's high as fuck <laughs> watching me fucking stare down these two kids. Like, y'all better shut the fuck up. Don't you fucking start screaming right now. That's why I couldn't get a oh. drink, man. Oh, you know, and I try, man. like I said, I try, you know, I try giving candy. So it was so fucked up, dude. So Dave ends up leaving, but I'm just laughing. Like, when I realize he's trying to be like so good and play guitar and cheer these kids up. He knows me. So he knows that look in my eyes fucking yeah. pure. <laughs> trying to keep my shit together because yeah. I'm like, why the fuck am I dealing with crying? My kids are dead. We're good. Yeah. I can go to the fucking bar. And now I'm just watching two kids cry. This is the most annoying thing. This is called you, hell. You do this thing, Chad, where you... <laughs> this like this deep breath thing. <laughs> and I could just read it on your face like, fuck, Chad is pissed right now. <laughs> Like, I was so mad, dude. I and I'm a well, sap he, when it comes to kids too, man. Like I, I'm sorry. Like I, I'm not Uncle Chad. I am Uncle Dave. That fucking will be like, you want to hear a song? Let's play, fucking a game. Like, oh, well, I man. tried. I tried. And when that, when it doesn't work, I'm like, well, yeah, watch. I ain't gonna try for 20 minutes. I mean, I ain't gonna fucking try for 20 minutes. I'm like, you want you want to fuck you want to fuck my life up? I'm gonna fuck your life up. Fuck you too, then, man. You want to just fucking sit here and cry in my presence? <laughs> I'm going to fucking make it real miserable then. If you're going to cry, I'm going to fucking say how I feel. Yeah. And, but when he, because he goes, I want my, and I said, shut it down. <laughs> shut it down. Because I know that shit just keeps going. And yeah. then he's going to be, I want my mommy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going <laughs> to fucking, I'm gonna fucking knock your ass out, you little motherfucker. Do not scream around me. Like, I'm fucking, I'll set you free in the fucking woods. <laughs> Oh my but god! Dude. I love I love them to death, but yeah, yeah, so I know where it goes, and that's why I'm like, oh man! Oh, yeah. And I knew that, I knew that if I got mad though, then I knew you know, Jackson. I knew the brother. He he'd really start crying, and he yeah. was doing good. Yeah, he, know, was, he was he was holding it together. it together, and he was trying to be strong for his little brother. You know, I yeah, see and then he like, started he melting out, and he's he like, like he "Good job, Jackson." Why? That's a fucked up. Thing. <laughs> like, That's a fucked up thing. It's like I'm looking at Jackson on attention. Like, good job. 
And then he's like, uh. <laughs> yeah. And what was what 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 got me? What tripped me out so bad is because I'm looking at you and I'm looking at both of them and I'm like, oh shit, like. Jackson's crying now, but he's trying to hide it from Uncle Chad because he knows Uncle Chad's an asshole. <laughs> like, and, and the poor yeah. kid's like, he's trying to watch those hunting videos and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> and then he's got his face down, dude, and they're, you know, bugling yeah, for elk. That, and I'm like, and I'm cool with that. That's how you should cry. Don't make it all fucking public and announced and loud. You know what I mean? Keep it inside. You know, it's fuel. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, you know? my God. It was hilarious, dude. But, yeah, they, they Dave ends up leaving, and then, like, I give him, like, I tell Action, I'm like, get it. Or, I, you know, Jackson's doing good. I'm like, good job, Jackson. And I'm like, calm down. He calms down. I said, okay. So I gave him each piece of licorice. I said, see, you don't cry, I'll give you licorice. <laughs> and then next thing I know, I fell asleep, and John had never walked in, dude. <laughs> What the fuck? Where does that come from? Head a dude at the end. Hey, man, people are on it tonight. They want to hear the good stories, Chad. They want to hear about yeah. fucking you throwing people off the fucking porch at Elk River, uh, log in, and all the good stuff, man. <clears throat> what? I'll tell you what, though. The, the best fucking thing, though, is I remember after we had our near-death experiences, we all decided we're going to fucking go, and we're going to hit the log in, and we're going to get these fucking Huckleberry Lemonades. Ooh. And those things were hitting hard that night, man. That and the pink tequilas, and I'll tell you what, man, tequila, tequila rose is yeah. what you call it, Chad. What what the hell is that stuff? Milk and that's what it was. That's, tequila. It's tequila rose. It's that's the name oh, of gosh. it. I don't know. It's some kind of. It looked like Pepto Bismol, <laughs> but it's, but it's, it's like tequila right. rose. It's, right. it's good stuff, man. Yeah, I, that's. I just do. Victoria used to drink that like a few years. Yeah, Victoria used to drink that a few years back, and I don't, I don't, I don't know how they re-entered the night. But those Huckleberry Lemonades were new to me. I was, you guys were talking about them for two days. Finally, I said, "Fine, give me one." Yeah, they, they were, they were, deli- they were incredibly refreshing. They were refreshing. They were good, but they fucked you up. Yeah, which is great because you're like you're feeling refreshed. You feel like you're doing the right thing, but you're still getting yeah. drunk, so it's even better. It's not like something refreshing that sobers you up, which is annoying. You know, I worked hard and paid good money for this buzz. I don't, I, yeah, I'm down to refresh, but I don't want to fucking reset, you know, spear shoot a dude over a table. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're talking about fight stories. Uh, I mean, fight stories. So Conor McGregor oh. threw a fucking thing through a bus. He's fucking fighting this weekend, board, man. I am super pumped for these fights. I, I I'm hope pumped too. He's fucking losing. He's losing his shit. Want- I, I actually, I hope he actually finally wins one here. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't. I hope he gets his fucking ass whipped now. That, that after seeing him, after seeing him talk so much shit, like try to be this nice guy, he gets knocked out. Now he's gonna be the bad guy again. Then the the whole thing about the little front kick he threw, that's different. <laughs> that's different than pushing somebody. It's different than oh, smacking yeah. somebody's hand out of your face. It's different than DC and John Jones, like the head to head and pushing each other in the throat. He tried to go around and kick somebody in the hip. Like, like that, that's the biggest bitch move I've ever seen at a face off. Yeah. To actually try to kick. Like, that's some shit you see girls do when girls it, are right? getting broke up in a fight. Yeah, it yeah. looked like it flicked like uh, you know, Poirier's shirt. So, so and I mean, then he comes out for taking it and he goes at the weigh-ins tonight. He goes, uh, taking advantage of someone's niceness. He's fucking dead in the kick. Like, shut up, dude. <laughs> shut up. That's it. If he doesn't win, he's done. Like nobody's yeah, gonna give a fuck sure. about it. That's why I kind of want him to win. I, don't I think, um, yeah, because I mean, it's the sports funner with McGregor in it for sure. Yeah. And, and I mean, if he loses, he's he's gonna lose so much. But I mean, I don't want him to win just because I don't like how fake he obviously was, and oh, yeah. this turning it on. Not now. Oh, it's not it when you're when he was that way. It was one thing, but he comes back with Donald Cerrone, and when he's humble and he wins. Comes back with Dustin Poirier, so respectful and humble. Gets knocked out. Once he gets knocked out and loses, nah, fuck this, fuck you, I'm fucking, you know. And now he's trying so hard. It's so labored. Like, it's not. And then he's so rattled by the fact that Poirier knocked him out that when they were like, why are you getting all angry? And Poirier at a press conference goes, because he got knocked the fuck out. That's why. And McGregor's like, 
And he won't say it. He can't, he can't say anything because he's so mad. Then McGregor, you know, then Poirier goes, yeah, not McGregor fast and McGregor sleep. Yeah, that got like, him good. Not even that joke, but made it brilliant is that Connor didn't say anything because yeah. he was so mad. He's so rattled about the fact that he got knocked out. He didn't, like he's flat out admitting, he didn't care as much about getting submitted, which is stupid oh, because yeah. if you get choked unconscious on the street, might as well be knocked out. You can get raped. You can get fucking whatever, bro. Like once you're out, you're out. So that's a fucking dumbass thing to say, especially somebody that was embracing the sport of mixed martial arts so much and movement and kicks and all the aspects. Now, now it's just about boxing. Like the, the turn in his character once he lost is one of the ugliest turns I've ever seen from, from you used you know, to write his the dick, shit bro. talk of the donation. I never really did. I, agree. I liked his right. skill. Uh, I liked, liked his, his skill and I said he's witty. Now he's not witty. Like I I I pulled back on the Khabib fight. What well, first it was him punching the old man, but the punching the old man, but the Khabib fight when he was going off about Ali and terrorists and he was trying to talk about Dagestan and the countries and history. You tell like the motherfuckers like yacked out on stage. When that turned to his thing of talking shit, I'm like, this isn't witty or fun. This is just stupid. Like, even Dana White, after the one press conference, said, it's the fucking uh, uh, darkest press conference ever been part. What is that? We rented an entire restaurant to watch the fight in private party. The fight scene is crazy out here. Bro, yeah. I can't see you anywhere. <laughs> I don't know what the oh, fuck happened. Chat. Are you still on the what, screen? What, I'm gone? Yeah, yeah, I'm still on the screen. I don't know. I, I Keep- tried to pull up the fight. I'm I'm freaking out right now. You got to be somewhere on this can screen. You hear me I now? can still hear you. You're, you're All right, still there. Somewhere. Hear me, we're good, baby. What about what about here? I'm gonna pull my phone right now at a distance so we don't get the. Oh, here yeah. we go. Be live. Woo, baby. Back in action. Oh, fucking fuck. <laughs> yeah. You in my back. In my back, back, back on track. I can see you. I can see you. I can feel you. Lips Bro. smack, dried up. Mm-mm-mm. Oh shit! Have we been on for forty-one minutes? There ain't no fucking way we've been on for yes, forty-one we have. minutes. Yes, Forty-two minutes now. Um, Damn, bro. So, so Sean O'Malley got an opponent on this one. Uh, I'm. I, I, is this this guy's got, first UFC yeah, fight? It's debut. It's his debut in the UFC. Yes, it is his UFC debut. Yeah. How legit is this guy, Chad? I don't know much about him, Chris. Uh, I didn't do any real out. research on him, so I, I I truly didn't look the guy up that much. I was so distracted by by the rest of the card that I didn't. You know, I know O'Malley said after watching his fights, like, oh fuck, like this dude's no joke. You know, like what I see is legit. But if you're in O'Malley's shoes, that's what you're gonna say. You're not gonna say this guy's a fucking bum. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So. See right there. They, so, yeah. they don't even have a picture yeah, of the that's guy. How new he is. Wow, that's insane. Yeah. So what? Is it is it is, is this I mean, a hand me for from the UFC for Sean O'Malley? They do favor the guy, right? I I, I mean I mean watch him lose, watch him lose. Yeah, that's I could see this being one of the ones he loses. Like I think this is. Uh, I I never I like consider him. a fight like this. Yeah, I I don't consider a fight like this a hand me because because of the fact that we don't know who this guy is and it's going to be the biggest opportunity of his life against a huge name. And for Sean O'Malley, there's no win here. There's literally no win. If he beats us, it does. This fight does not matter for Sean O'Malley. All it is is bad. Unless Sean O'Malley knocks this guy out in like a few seconds. And even if he does that, then they're going to say the dude's a nobody. So like, I mean, it, 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 cannot if he goes if it's a war they're gonna talk shit on sean o'malley it doesn't matter yeah. how good this guy looks if sean o'malley wins it it, it 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 doesn't matter really how he wins the guy's either gonna be considered a bum or sean o'malley is not as good as we thought for this guy it's everything it's win-win yeah so i mean you know it's uh I, what, yeah i i, I when think, is I sean o'malley hard. gonna get a breakthrough fight though like <clears throat> Tough opponent. I mean, he has to. He still has to beat somebody like this. Like he said, he's got a good name to call out. But I mean, he's got to get. You know, he's got to get another top ten. Yeah. Win. And I think they give him somewhere. You know, I mean, he has to get. He has to get from that ten to five. I don't even think you give him top five without two more wins in the in the top ten. Like you got to give him that five to ten. Yeah. I I can't. I don't have the rankings right now in front of me. But he needs to get to. 
two top 10 opponents before he gets in that top five. I mean, you got too much going yeah. on at the 135 pound division between you got Garbrandt, you got uh, Cody uh, or TJ Dillashaw coming back against Corey Sanhagen. I mean, you still got Aldo up, up there. You got Marlon Marais up there. Why don't they well, because Garbrandt's still ranked too high. Garbrandt, he's, he's got to get another window. Sean O'Malley right Garbrandt now. would just be, yeah, and Garbrandt would just be. That's a loss for Garbrandt. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's the it's it's that's all for Sean O'Malley, and that's what I mean. Like, there's no point Garbrandt in one of those top five guys fighting down. Okay, that's a, that's a good argument. I get I'm that, saying. but. For me, I, I, I say, you know, there's always got to be someone breakthrough. You don't have to climb one step at a time on this fucking UFC ladder. Conor McGregor stepped no, over you everybody. Don't. Nate Diaz is going to step over everybody. He's probably going to be the next guy to fight Usman after Covington and fucking all that shit. Just because the 170-pound division sucks. Who's at 170 yeah. that's worth a shit? And, and, and you could almost even argue that at 55 now. All those guys are fucking starting to lose. Unless your name's Gaethje or McGregor or Poirier, there, there ain't fucking nobody there. 205 sucks, dick. Um, you know, man, you know, you know I'm, I'm going to take that back. You might be right on Cody Garbrandt. Garbrandt's off of a couple losses, a, yeah. He had, had, he had three losses. In, he lost TJ, lost TJ, lost Pedro Munoz, beat Rafael Sunsau. And then lost a Rob Font, so he's off a lot of losses. Is uh, yeah, yeah. So I mean, that's not a bad matchup. Maybe that's who Sean O'Malley's saying he's going to call out. And and if you're Nate Diaz, you don't give a fuck about the rankings, right? So I mean, why why does Sean? So O'Malley... he's number five. He's he's number five. So that wouldn't be bad to if you gave O'Malley if O'Malley wins, you you could give him Garbrandt and then one more person before a title. That you think could Garbrandt be like wants the, that fight. Um, if Sean O'Malley wins and calls out Cody Garbrandt, then yes, I think, Co then I think Cody Garbrandt would take it. I forgot he come off the loss. I was still thinking he was on that huge knockout win, but then he lost to Rob Font decision and Rob Font, you know? So yeah, I mean, it, that would put Cody Garbrandt in the shoes to say, okay, you know, Sean O'Malley has a good spotlight on him now. Like, okay, I'll shut this punk up. And you know, Cody Garbrandt's probably looking at that like an easy win too on a big on a name. So yeah. So the, in, with, within that light, him coming off a loss, I would say yeah, that's a good fight for Garbrandt now. I, I, like I, I, I forgot that he just lost. O'Malley's I like O'Malley's funny. attitude yeah. towards this whole fucking UFC thing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he he's like he's like a stoner kid fucking that shouldn't be there. That's fucking hella good at fighting. You know what I mean? Well, and, he's he's incredibly. Sir Cerebral too, though he's yeah. like, he's he yeah, but like yeah. I mean he's a stoner well, I mean, kid. He he's not he dyes his hair fucking crazy ass colors, you know. Like he looks like he just he's a, he, woke up and smoked pot. Like every time you see him, I I think he's definitely like um, he's definitely has the you know he kind of forges his own path. You know, whether he's, whether he's borrowing anybody that talks shit on a character like him out, Oh, you're borrowing this from Conor McGregor. Like, which has actually been brought up a bunch of Sean O'Malley commented about, but before I seen it, I've always felt this way. I hate when people are like, Oh, you're just trying to be like this guy or that guy. Like, I'm sorry. I have a hero who just so happens to be one of the greatest of all time. And yeah, I'm incorporating some of those antics into my life. Like, duh, that'd be like saying like you're playing baseball and you start hitting home runs and they're like, you're just trying to be like Mark McGuire or Sammy Sosa. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, of I, course. I kind of fucking Thank am. You. Like, why, why, why is that a bad thing? Like, the, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's so, it's so stupid to me that th that is a part of like criticism or hate in the sport. That's just absolutely far-fetched and ridiculous. Like there's, there are times when somebody's trying to be like somebody and uh -huh. it's very unauthentic and annoying and cringe. Like Colby, when he, but Colby was doing his thing, he, he was definitely ripping off Conor McGregor with the shitty suits Col and, you know, at, at first. Well, Colby, Colby's whole thing that that's annoying. I I'll tell you, I didn't like it, but it didn't like, it didn't like bug me a bunch. I'm just like, God, he's just running his mouth. Cause I, he's a la Chell Sonnen, like Chell Sonnen's coaching him on how to be a heel. Right. So I could see he's playing the heel 
and it's annoying. What made me dislike, and I like Colby Covington as a fighter, dude. I think he's a fucking stud, bro. Yeah. Like, and I know he has a crazy work ethic, but the, when he started talking shit about people in the gym and in his own gym and all that, yeah. and you know, no I need to get into all that. Started dislike, but the biggest thing that made me think he was a bitch that I didn't like. The bigot, well, beyond that was the Fabricio Verdum video. Mm -hmm. So what comes out is Colby talking hella shit. Fuck you to Verdum, all this, which already annoyed me because Verdum's across the street. And I'm like, I hate anybody that's talking shit from across the street. You're not anywhere where security is. Like you're across the street yelling at somebody. That's, I, I'm already annoyed there. But then Fabricio, Fabricio Verdum shared his friend's video that flat out show Verdum in his face and Colby Covington was scared as fuck, like petrified, bro. Wanted nothing to do with Fabricio Verdum until he got across the street and tons of people were in between him. Then he starts recording his video live going, yeah, that's what's up, motherfucker. Fuck Brazil. And he's talking all the shit when like, it's like, oh my God, bro, you're the, the epitome of a bitch. For the fans. Yeah. Um, it's like, you should, about it. when I seen... When I seen that, that's when I'm like, okay, Colby, now you're a fucking bitch, bro. Like that, that is the pussy shit that like, I can't stand at all. You know, and Jorge Masvidal talks about it. Like all these guys that are tough on camera, but when you see them behind the scenes, like you hear people talk like that. And what Colby did was like the epitome of a punk, dude, uh, to so be scared I as fuck when you're in front of somebody cross the street and start talking shit. You're despicable, despicable. Sorry, I've never Can you hear seen me, this before. Yeah, I'm back. We I'm switch in, sides. I'm in action. I switched sides because You're I frozen. put my camera. I can't hear you. Now Can you hear me. me now? Am I okay? Now it's me and you. Are we good? Now it's me. Are we good? Am I still frozen? Me and you. Don't lie. But Am I, I still frozen? You. Oh, you can't hear me. Talk Shit. Here. But I can't hear you. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Can you hear me, Chad? <laughs> well, listeners out there, Dave's trying to pull up a video. He is the hostess with the mostess, but he cannot seem to pull this one off, ladies and gentlemen. Chad, this, can you hear me? This particular part of the episode I pulled off, it just didn't actually record. Chad, can you hear me? Oh, look at that. He's switching views, switching stuff. Can you hear you me? Back can you hear me? I'm gonna, let me pop in on that. Can you hear me? Facebook. Can you hear me? We got something going on here. Can you hear me? Oh. That's still Let's hear. kick Chad out of the room. Can you hear me, Chad? Man, now you bring. Can we hear you? Do we do we have the volume? Do we have everything here? I hid my camera. Nope. I got nothing. <laughs> no, no, we didn't in oh nothing. We didn't in nothing. We didn't in nothing. Are you there? Yeah, I have now. What is going Are you there? on here? We got some madness going on. Are you there? Let me see. I'm gonna tell. It's my sound now. See if you mess my shit up. Are you there, Chad? Can you hear I me? Hear you. you can't hear. What is going on? We're having some bad issues here. Can you hear me, Chad? Can you hear me? Whoa. Chad, man. You're on the live feed, but you're just not coming through to me. I, everyone can hear me. No bad thing here. <laughs> Check. Don't even explain. Oh, Chad, yeah. can you hear me? I can definitely hear you. I can hear you, Chad. I can definitely hear you. I hear you on the Facebook feed. But what I'm going to do... I'm going to drop out. Okay. Gonna We're going to remove no. Chad from this. Let's get this fucking video that Chad's been talking about. Kicked about. Shit's going crazy. We're still here. Let's, let's stop the video. All right, guys, I should be here. Now he's Hopefully Chad's me. here. Hopefully I didn't screw things up too bad. We're going to bring Chad in the stream at any minute now. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> no, I think that's going to happen. <laughs> kick me out and bring him back. All right, All we're going to rewatch this video. Yes. 
Can you see the video? So boom, Kobe's over there with the right now, right? Yeah. Well, no. Yeah, see? Look at Kobe's all scared right now. Fabrizio's in his face. He won't do anything. Oh, what? See, boom. Hits him with the burrito. Look at him jumping back. Hits him with shit. the burrito. He won't do anything. See, look at him. Walks away. Where did this come from? Like, wait, wait. Started this. Oh, and then he walks across the street and he's walking away. Because this is when... This, yeah, he was talking hell of shit on Brazil, so Fabricio was doing... Now walk. Watch, now he'll pull out his phone, and then he'll start talking shit. Is that Putin? No, it's Colby Covington <laughs> for Timmy. Yeah. So this is when he starts getting tough. Yeah. See, now he's now he's getting tough. And that's where his video starts on like, his feet, where he starts talking shit. See, now he's now talking he's shit. But he just got pegged in the face of the burrito, didn't do shit, walked across the street, and now he's walking away. See, now he's recording. Oh, yeah, I'm fucking tough guy. This is the video that made me all respect. I mean, oh, now now he's talking shit. Yeah, okay. yeah see? Look at walking away and talking shit. Wow, man, you're a fucking badass. It was, it was all over that Brazil thing? Yeah, because yeah. Because he said Brazil is a shithole or something? Yeah, like, hey, you're not going to fucking talk shit about my country, you know, da 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 Which, like, I mean... I don't know. Any countryman would say, you know, that's, that's you know, cool. Got a whole, whole bunch of lot. He did. <laughs> yeah. I know a lot of people like didn't see that video and they're like, oh, fucking, yeah, cool. You know, I'm like, watch the fucking other view of it where he gets fucking paid. I forgot about the fact that he got pegged in the face of the fucking burrito. That's pretty <laughs> insane, man. Like, I, I didn't realize this. I've never seen this video. I didn't even know about this altercation happening. I just heard Joe Rogan talk about it. Rogan talked about it. I, I I've never heard about it happening, but I, I'm not surprised. The dude said sh Brazil was a piece of shit and, and and pissed off a lot of Brazilians out there. They're very prideful people in their country. As well, I mean, well, I mean, it doesn't matter where you go. Like you, you, you know, you're if you're running your fucking mouth, you better be ready for something. Yeah, like that's you know that's the whole thing. Like you know what I mean. You don't talk that much unless you're ready for it. But like right there. Um, oh, what's well? Oh, God. Oh, him in the face. Oh, I'm um, walking across the street. Oh, 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 wait. Somebody's got him secured. Okay. What's up, motherfucker? Yes. What's up? Yeah. Stupid. Pussy. Little bitch. Little bitch ass yeah. motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. But he can, you know, he, he fights good at 170, though. I mean, I think he gave Usman the best fight. Oh, fuck. I'm trying to get out of here. Uh, sure. uh, uh, he's getting another shot at Usman here soon, right? Well, that's they, they that's what they were saying, but you know he goes, "Hey, uh, Obi uh, Usman and Colby's next, so I don't know who's not signing or what's not working." You know, you know, I don't know. I think that yeah, Usman's, you know, I I, yeah, I really I, mean, I I hope Colby like fucks up Usman because I thought he did the best out of anybody that's gone against him. I mean, jaw. he broke his jaw early in the fight. I I think he has a fucking chance, man. Like. He wasn't far off from fucking getting a couple through and fucking beating the guy. I yeah. mean, definitely looked better than Gilbert. Honestly, Burns. he he looked the best, and it was it was even going in around five. I think it was two to two going in around five, and Colby got a little. Then yeah, Usman started busting him up. I mean, I definitely would have liked to see. I I hate stoppages like that. I mean, nobody nobody wins with a stoppage like that. Like Usman's getting discredited. Because people are saying it's an uh, early stoppage. Colby doesn't get to go out on his sleeve. It's like, you're talking about a world title fight and you're going to stop it because he's wobbled and down? Like, I'm sorry, but that, but no, that's stupid. I mean, you're not, you're not, I, I just, I mean, you know, if we're going to, here's a good one. Here's the good <laughs> argument. Now I got it. Now I got it. Here's a good argument. Here's what you say, right? Because they're going, we're just here for the fighter's safety. How much you weigh okay. right now, Chad? Listen to this. Weight. What's up? How much Anthony weigh? wants your, to know. Weigh? I weigh 213 right now. If I fight again, I'm fighting at 185. 177. Sir. I remember Dave went in a cage fight. We was drinking five minutes before. Very true. Very true. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> Arnold, Arnold, but like baby. hella drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Yeah, that's the best way to do you it, should. man. You, you take out all the nerves if you're wasted. You know? <laughs> I don't. I, if I if I was like, if I could have been like at each of my fights and had like four or five beers in me, and then they said get in the cage and fight, I probably wouldn't have lost. I, I would have been fine. No nerves. Like I've been like, I'm gonna fuck this dude I, up, bro. <laughs> I may fight again if they got Huckleberry Vodka there and, and these Huckleberry Lemonade yeah. drinks. There's two of them, and that's I'm ready gotta, to go. That's all I got to do? Two you of them, I'm watch ready out, to go, boy, bro. I'm getting, I'm getting to you promote them real up. quick, Dave. I'll you fucking hook you up. I, I'm ready. You give me a fight, I'm ready. Yeah. You, you you give me a little bit of vodka, I'm ready to go, brother. Greg's Let's in your fucking this. corner. Greg's, Greg's like, always okay. in my corner, dude. Greg's like, I have the mushrooms going. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Just eat. Okay. What we'll do, Dave, is is like remember what Chad was like. So we don't give you chocolate chips between rounds. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna give you one a little one to start with, and then we're gonna give you another one between one round and two. Just like okay? a rod. We'll, we'll see how, and we'll see how in the zone you are. You might go matrix on them. <laughs> you know, we don't know. Yeah, yeah. only one way creation. to find out, Dave. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That wouldn't be a bad idea, man. Like, <laughs> why is Dave praying on this dude? He's praying. <laughs> the guy gets hella confused. Dave's like, "Bless your soul, child." <laughs> For the whoop and that I will rain down upon you. <laughs> yeah, I grab his like, hand. Gonna... Yeah, you're gonna have to hit him. Dave's like, "Join me in prayer. Join me in prayer. I will now take your back." <laughs> you talk to me, submitting. <laughs> At least Lord, I'm not bro. singing the national anthem, bro. And then <laughs> and then his corner gets smart and fucking throws a steak in there, a cheese stick in there, bro. And you're like, no! <laughs> a steak or a cheese stick. Apparently, I can't handle either a one. A fucking cheese stick, dog. And then this guy's chasing you around with a cheese stick. You're like, stop fucking playing, man. <laughs> and I'm giving you the thumbs up. <laughs> yeah. Chad, Chad. I'm like, yeah, you're good, Dave. You're good. Just chew it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh man hooked on endorphins oh, <laughs> hey you know what i think the best oh, uh sorry this just dawned on me the yeah. fight of the night on this fucking card is gonna be max griffin and carlos condit that should be a fucking war. That's what I'm saying, bro. That's what I'm saying. That I I, I was That's listening to C and Red. I heard you guys bring it up a couple times. Fucking get it, Max Griffin, dude. That is your motherfucking fight. Yeah. You know, like fucking this is your fucking chance, bro. It's like, his coming out party, man. I'm yeah. excited for it, man. He, I'm really excited. He went to war. We were we we, we were we were there in, in for the Vegas for yeah. the bachelor party when he went to war with uh, Cowboy Charles Oliveira. Mm -hmm. Went to war with him, dude. And now he gets Carlos Condit. Like, I mean, this is and God for him to win is so huge. And I want him to win so bad because you know, Carl, Carlos Condi, I love him. I love him. But he's, yeah. he's he's done his run. He's made his name. He is a legend in the sport. And for Max, this solidifies his his presence in the UFC. He yeah. gets this win. He comes out of there. He is in the UFC. I mean, he's been entertaining the whole time. And I mean, I, I just I just can't. I just want him to get this so bad. I believe he can. I think, you know, Max is a dog of war and I, I do, I mean, as much as I like Carlos Condit and he's savvy and he's a veteran, I think that this kind of stylistic matchup can favor Max and the fact that Max is going to go at him and put Carlos on his back, back foot. And as long as Max avoids Carlos's fucking skyscraper knees yeah. and, you know, elbows and, and those you know, I mean, but Carlos, you know, is also known for. Yeah. But, you know, like, I mean, if, 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 Max is pushing hard on him. You know, he's not going to get kicked too much if Carlos is on his back foot. It's just, you know, Carlos circling and finding a way. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I I really hope Max Griffin does it. I, yeah. I think that this is the fuck. What Anthony's one. trying to say is he's been trying to get these two fighters on our podcast for a while now, bro, and they're doing hella good. Yeah. You got to step up as fucking producer and host, Dave. You know what I'm saying? You know, Chad, I, I they're, was giving you an opportunity. You told me I had like five or six guests lined up ready to go. And I do. And I do. And let's get him. Let's bet, get him. Hey, okay. Are we good again? Are we? Are we? This is what this is. <laughs> this is the most famous. This is the most fucking famous sinner and the saint quote ever. We're back. We're gonna be doing episodes every week. We ain't missing it no more. 
You guys are in for a shirt. We're here. We are here to stay, baby. It's like then it's like six week lull. Yeah, it yeah. happens, man. And it then happens. we do like two or three. It's like we're back. We're here. To, yeah, and that's we what I'm saying. I'm, just stressed I'm just saying that's like the most famous quote. We're 66 episodes in over like five years. There's hey. 52 weeks in a year. We ain't hit fucking. You know, we hit we hit like the first. God, I want to say we did like the first 16. Boom, boom. Yeah, boom. boom. And like 16 to 20 episodes were truly every week. Yeah. We were doing fucking great for a long time. Started getting a little more spread out. Yeah. They, they, we spread them out, but you know what? The people love them. People love them. We got, we got fans out there. I, I see, you know, I was at this cage fight event, you know, with some local, uh, friends of ours. And, and I, I seen a couple of our fans in the audience. I seen Vince, I seen Ali, I seen people, Casey and, and, and Tim was there and Isaac. And I was like, those are, those all, are all actually fans. I'm just going to say, here's what I'm going to say. Here's what I'm going to say. Dave's a dick right now. I call those friends before fans every day of the week. Fucking days. Dave just labeled you guys all as fans. You're none of you are friends. <laughs> None of you are friends that we've known for fucking years, went to school with and shit. You're all just fans. No, no, no. You're no, just no, fans. No. Man. We, we, we love That's them, though. But the, those are about I'm the like, only fans we get to shit. see in, in, in public. I, I, I guess you get, uh, you get our fans oh, in Idaho fucked. from time to time. I do. Yeah. That's what's fucked up. Like, no, it, what's, dude, the best one's like Victoria or some shit when she's, uh, when she's substituting and one of the teachers is like, oh my God, I watched yours and the husband's, the queen's take. Like, that was so good. And Victoria's like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. It happens, man. Substituting people, for a fucking third grade teacher. And then they're like, like, we like your show. Oh, where I'm talking about fucking, yeah. It's yeah. a great show. Dude. I know and she was supposed to do one this week. She, she fucking, she, she didn't you guys do me. porn on your last, your last episode you filmed? Like you guys. <laughs> I don't know. I remember Bobby like, dude, didn't you see Queen's take last night? I'm pretty sure they were like getting to town. Like, bro. What? No. See, this is what Dave, Dave you're a butt. See, it, See? It, that comment yeah, yeah, actually yeah. says it's, I'm a butt liquor. Dave, you're a butt. Oh, butt it just showed liquor? up. You're a butt liquor. He must I'll be watching the old I'll shit. I'll lick a booty bro. hole. How many butts? I just you grew up. Lick? Me? Yeah. Me, honestly, one Victoria. That's it. <laughs> well, now I like one other one. Kind of. I don't know. You fucking your farts. Sometimes I feel like I licked your ass, dude. <laughs> you could taste it right <laughs> on the tip of the tongue. Oh, <laughs> They're no. disgusting, bro. <laughs> disgusting. Yeah, I, I, I had, I had no. You know, it, it just happened. Now I remember. Uh, I remember the 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 first booty hole I ever like licked. I just kind of like I was like just fuck it, and I just and I just slurped right up it. And I remember when my tongue hit by that booster, ah! and I was like, whoa, there's a whole nother level, you know, but like, I didn't sit there and like toss salad or nothing. You know, we just started banging like ferociously. Yeah. So for like five seconds, <laughs> you oh, know, that was awesome. There's, there's a fucking saying out there, you know, and, and fucking some, some people like to fucking lick ass, dude. There's nothing wrong with that. There's I like, was just you telling, know, I was what's that John bumper sticker? That remember? There was bumper stickers that say like I eat ass. Chipotle and toss. Oh. Yeah. Um, fucking uh uh I was telling John today, I'm like, dude, but butthole licking has been like a thing for a couple of years. I was like, it's all over there. He's like, bullshit. I'm like, no, I swear to God, dude, there's like a a fad. Like everything was joking about like tossing salads and eating booty holes. Like the last couple of years, there's all these Instagram things and stuff like that. I was like, God damn. I think that's part of the like demasculinity of fucking society in general. And males in general is like what happens. Like if you think about the Roman times and all that and, you know, Rome and their fall and everything like that was just homosexuality and mass like public sex and all kinds of dudes, fucking dudes and girls. And like, they didn't care or have any type of relationship. Nothing was to do. So I was getting like his booty hole licked a bunch by a girl. Next thing you know, you know, too much. I think that all of a sudden minds just get open and everybody's like, nah, we're all getting our asses licked. And then next thing you know, homosexuality takes over and then boom, fall of an empire. Like, I'm not saying nothing again, you know, if you're going to be gay, be gay, but I'm saying like, you know, I think that really, the whole play can eventually lead to the destruction of a civilization. You really you know, fucking got deep on booty hole play. That's what I'm saying. You ever see, you ever stumble across porn accidentally that, that fucking, you know what I'm saying? We're like a dude's getting his butthole licked and he's just like grabbing the table. Like, ah, <laughs> ah, ah. He looks like a chick. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? It fucking demasculates you immediately. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. Like I, I fucking first time, fucking you know, my shit ever got turned. Like, I'm like, God damn it! I'm like, I'm flinching, but that fucking felt pretty good. Like, what the fuck do I do? I'm so confused right now. So I think that as a man, when you just start to fully embrace, just like on a regular basis, getting your booty hole licked, you're just getting more and more fur further <laughs> into that point where you're just fucking. Oh, you know, it gives the woman. The woman is then becoming like the man. Like when we eat a girl out and she's going crazy, legs wrapped around us. We're not getting any feels out of that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but when she's licking a booty hole and a dude's just fucking like, oh. <laughs> legs wrapped around her. I'm telling you. know what I'm saying? That's <laughs> Those hairy Now you're legs the chick. Wrapped. You're the chick, bro. You're on your back fucking holding your fucking legs up. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> For the listeners out there, Chad just fucking went down like a ton of bricks. That's the, called the favor of God. We've discussed it on this episode. <laughs> Did you break your chair? A fucking bar stool. No, I just fell off it. I was like, I thought I had better balance than that. That's called the favor of God, Chad. Anytime you're fucking a, uh, talking shit, dude, God's just slapping you, big, bro. That's not, I'm like in God's favor on this one. Oh. Oh. Are you okay, brother? <laughs> you, you, you took a fucking hell of a fall, man. I might have got a little too animated. The gayest shit I've ever heard today. Well, yeah, that's how we were talking. I mean, come on, follow along, guys. Yeah. <laughs> it know? moves quickly, guys. If you can't yeah, swim, get out the my water. My mind is a million miles an hour. I'm, you don't even want to know what 17 other subjects are after that that went through my head. What, what, story what was lane. it, 20% that oh, comes out, 80% stays in? Right? Yeah, right? I'm operating maybe 30, yeah. 70 right now. I got like 70% up there that I ain't talking about. Yeah. You know, the alcohol takes me about 30. You don't want to, if I'm 50, 50, nobody likes me anymore. <laughs> now, Chad, let's talk about this. So you're saying it's it's kind of fucking demasculating to fucking get your legs up and fucking let them fucking get down on the booty hole. But what about I'm if you're saying like, it might happen every once in a while, but it can't be regular. Yeah. So how often is too, too much? Like, are no you saying idea. I have no, I have no idea. I'm just saying like, it ain't happened to me that like, I never had my booty hole licked. Okay. Yeah. But I've had it. I've had it like brushed. Chad, uh, the way back. you shit and the way you fart, dude, I don't know who would fucking come close. That's to what that I'm asshole. saying. I don't know a girl. If a girl licked my booty hole, I don't, <laughs> the, um, the it better be like sheets. fresh out of shower, like with a bunch of wet wipes or I'm going to look at her like a whole different light. I might take it all in, but afterwards I'm not going to respect her as much. Like, Definitely not after a hard day of work. You don't want to go near that. And I can't can, help but can, I can't help but thinking, Chad, that everybody that with a bidet, I know you call them bow days, but everyone with a bidet fucking likes their asshole licked or touched or fucked. I'm gonna tell you the truth. Right? I was disappointed. I told you I used my first bow day, right? Boudet, yeah. Bo boudet, boudet. Booty, 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 booty. But it's French. I used my first one. I was severely disappointed because I heard all kinds of people talk about them, getting hooked on them, everything like that. I was on a job in this fucking old con contractor. We're in the middle, way back in the mountains, bro, up a river and shit. And he said, hey, use a second. There's two bathrooms, but the one on the back, on the right, he says something about like toilet paper. I'm like, what? And I'm thinking he said, so I'm thinking in my mind, like, because he taught, he went through it so matter of factly and quick. I'm thinking, oh, the, the furthest one, right, right, that one has toilet paper. I go in, no toilet paper. I'm like, fuck, you must have been saying that's the one with no toilet paper. I go, fuck, I, I do think he said no toilet paper. So I go to the other one, ain't no toilet paper in that motherfucker either. I go back to the other one, I'm like, what the fuck, this little electric thing. I'm like, oh shit, this is a fucking boat. I go, oh, he was telling me if you go to the one, you don't need toilet paper. I'm like, oh okay. shit. So I go back to the other one, I'm like, Fuck, there's not even toilet paper in this one. I go, fuck it. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to sack up and use this boat A. So I, you know, I do. I sit down, I'm like, okay, I've heard about fucking all kinds of people talking about this, you know, the whole thing, like I said, on the internet, everybody getting their butthole licked, okay. all this stuff. That's supposed to be all this great, this glory, everything like that. And I'm like, all right, I'm fucking this. Okay, okay. I'm Some people call it glory. It's got well, it's got different pressures, and you can move that like up, down to sweep, right? So I'm like, yeah. all right, all right. And I'm like, ooh. Okay, moving it down, <laughs> moving it up, trying different pressures. <laughs> Nothing. I mean, 
I kept spraying it, looking, make sure, you know, like I was clean. But I mean, I'm going to tell you the truth. There wasn't nothing that great about it. I think I had like a weird pressure or something. But I mean, I heard people talk about them forever, but there was nothing great about it. I even I told John, I said, I said, man, I used the bodega. He said, how was it? I was like, I was like, not impressive. He's like, what? It wasn't good? I was like, nah. I was like, it wasn't impressed at all. I was like, did not nothing it. for me. Did nothing for me. Did you wipe clean after that? Did you like try to test the waters and make I sure? I did. I went back and got a towel. I, I I really did. I went back and got one of our napkins and like went back in the bathroom to do a wipe because I wasn't sure. And I'm like, shit, I was clean as hell. Clean wipe, huh? I mean, it cleaned up good. Yeah. Clean wipe. Clean wipe. So maybe it's but, not. What, what I mean, were you looking for with this thing? I, I I know you wanted to be impressed, but what what did you want it to do to impress you? I was waiting to see if it was pleasurable. Like people talk about it, like it's the best thing in the world. Like getting your, you, you know, getting sprayed I think by the bodega. Like, like it feels hella good. Holes, dude. I think they just like clean buttholes. <laughs> I, I don't think. Nah, it has to bro. Do they're all, nah, nah. There's a reason. Like you see it in movies and shit, and everybody's like, oh, and they get hooked, and they're like, I'm getting me one of these. Nah, the whole thing is a sexual reference, bro. Come I don't think now. it is, man. I, I really don't. Man, don't so me. I thought about getting a boudet. Don't tell uh, me I've been looking at this wrong the entire time. <laughs> I thought about getting a boudet uh, when fucking COVID hit. Oh my God, that was the first like thing. COVID. Like, and everyone's like, "Oh, you can't get fucking toilet what? paper." What? Right? You can't. It was hard to get toilet paper from anywhere. Right? Oh, well, there was that little thing that come out where on the shutoff valve you put a splitter and shit, and then put a little sprayer right there. Well, no, they got one that lights that. up and shit on Amazon for like. I'll tell you what does like, feel good. Yeah, you get, plays music, you Bluetooth get, enabled. Uh -oh. You got a detachable shower head. No detachable shower head. You're still up. We it's all good. I'm getting right a now. phone call at the same time or FaceTime phone call. You uh, you keep talking, Chad. We're good. What is what do we got? I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read. I'm, What's up, Maria? Who, who you got? I got Maria. I'm piping in there. There we go. I got Maria on the line. Say what's up to Maria. What's up, Maria? How are you doing? Can you see? Can you see us? <laughs> what you doing? <laughs> Let me call you back. Man, I'll call you back. I can't keep talking. I can't. I can't. Okay. <laughs> That's my sister-in-law. That's my sister-in-law, Maria. She was calling. She was wanting to hang out and talk. It's, it was a FaceTime oh. call that came through. It freaked me out. So, like, the screen of you, like, closed down. I could still hear you talking, and it's, like, trying to let me oh. accept a phone call over here. So, it, it was a real trip. But I got gotcha. you. So, so, back to the boo days. So, so, again, they're not pleasurable. <laughs> I thought about buying one when COVID first hit just because all the toilet paper drama, and I'm like, we're not going to need fucking toilet paper. We'll just get a fucking bidet. You know, they got some cool ones. Yeah. You can fucking hook your phone up to it, play some songs. I mean, that's a good survival tactic. It would work. Yeah. I, I mean, but this... You got Bluetooth would you, bodega, you would wire up your own bodet if you had one? Like, if you wanted one? I don't know. I'm not that impressed, to be honest. Like, you know, didn't have enough pressure. On that. Like, I'm going to spend... I, 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 I went full to low. I, went, I did all the pressures. I was seeing going back and forth. I wanted to make sure there's plenty clean in there, and I was like... Just feels like I'm getting water sprayed on me. Like, is it? I don't. If anything, if anything, I was a little annoyed because I didn't have like. I still wanted to dry it. That's why I went and got paper to test it because I'm like, okay, were you gonna air dry it? Like, what? I mean, you still got a wet booty. Like, your butt's all wet. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna put in my underwear all wet now. Like, it's, it's, it's just a is a is a failed principle. Like I said, it's, it's got to be only for pleasure. But so so if there was head, a if there was a little dryer on there, you'd be good with it. I don't know. I'd have to try it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not going to say I would be good. I can't say that I'm good with something I ain't ever tried. I said, okay. okay, I tried the Bodet, put the, put the blow dryer down in there. You know, maybe that's the homemade one you got. You got a blow dryer <laughs> on one side and you got a, you got, like a the other. Sink, you got like a stink sprayer off the splitter on the other. And you go, whoosh, and then blow dry. Whoosh, you know, be good to go. <laughs> so know? back to this shower head that you keep talking about. What were you saying? You tell me you don't know what I'm talking about. Are you? I feel like you're faking it. You fucking. Faking I don't use it. detachable shower it. heads. I don't fucking use them. Dude, get one. You, I remember it's using great. One. You just reach down, spray those. You just you gotta. It's tricky, but you got you. 
get the sack a little spray. Pretty good. <laughs> I'll have to good. try. I and you really, and you gotta you gotta have low pressure, but you gotta fuck with the settings on the shower head. Each shower head is different. Not that I yeah. try it on every single. I do try it on every single. Well, thing. that that's but making me think the shower head at the big red set, barn was it. fucking detachable, bro. <laughs> like, was it? Yes, it was. Because oh. I was looking and I was like, fuck. And then that thing, that yeah. shower was so yeah, small, was. you couldn't really like detach it. You'd spray the whole bathroom <laughs> if you did. <laughs> no. <laughs> Chad, nah, speak it from experience. <laughs> bro, I told my brother about that shit. He's like, he's like, he's like, fuck, bro, I was fucking. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. my mom and dad have, you know, the dad, he goes, fuck, bro, I was in mom and dad's shower. I seen that shit. I said, fuck it. And I was fucking, I was like, Ugh! <laughs> Like, oh, this man. is good, bro. It's like getting your balls licked, dog. Like it's awesome, man. Anybody <laughs> out there who's ever tried the detachable shower head on your ball sack, look at, please comment below. Look what below. Anthony's got, man. Anthony, put your Anthony's got <laughs> at the tip on your pee hole. <laughs> Boom, busting in a minute. Okay, and if you keep if you keep spraying after you bust, you're crying in thirty seconds. <laughs> you're like, <Yeah>. oh, <laughs> stop, stop, stop. No. Yeah. Okay. I I I guess I'm fucking We're, up without. Was that it the point of this head. podcast to talk about UFC 264? 264. We still are talking about it. We, this all got started from Poirier fucking and his bidet and the leg kick and all that we shit. Never, bro. We never mentioned Poirier having a bidet. He's sponsored by Hello Tushy. I, I'm he? making that up. I'm making that up. But uh. First fight is Sean O'Malley oh, versus, like, this, Hello little, is Hello versus this little sense. chump. Um, where's the guy from? I don't know much about him. What kind of... Where did the UFC find this guy, Chad? Uh, one of the feeder leagues, man. He's been doing good in the feeder league. That's yeah. all I know. Like I said, I, I truly didn't look too much up. Like, I, I didn't really... There's just so much on the card. Like, I was... Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other good one... You got that Griffin and uh, Condit, and then that Nico Price and uh, Pereira, dude. That shit's gonna be fire. Michael pa be pa fire. Paeda. It's gonna be crazy. Yeah, he's fucking tight. He's exciting yeah, to watch. That fight right there is gonna be wild. Yeah, yeah. he's a, he's exciting. He fucking does like a backflip to like. A dude, he does cool shit in the cage too. He's like the only guy out there that's doing yeah. like really cool shit. That's that's one thing I like. He yeah. but he's he's also that dude that showed off and fucking hearing him show off like or watching him show off dude that kind of got annoying because he should have finished him at that point. You remember that fight? I forget yeah. who he was fighting, but he was really fucking cocky about it, but it was like, "Well, dude, finish him." Like The the only one that ever that annoys me anymore is Johnny Walker. I like Johnny Walker so much at first, but now like I I I don't like looking at him. Didn't he injure himself with like a celebration too? Like yeah, Johnny like one 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 Threw spectacular fashion, and then does a yeah backflip and like popped his knee out and shit. Yeah, but <laughs> that's some crazy. shitty luck. Greg Hardy's got a good fight on this one. Greg Hardy, it, it, yeah, he's been slowly and quietly like, to working Boston. his way up, working his way up, keep grinding. And 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 a lot of people hate on him too. Still, I don't know why they're fucking definitely still like hating on like his skills and stuff, saying he's not fucking legit enough. I don't understand when you, when it. You, I think he's fucking doing it, dude. He's talented. He made it to the NFL. Okay, so you're you're mm -hmm. dealing with an athlete. You're dealing with somebody at that caliber, which is already super rare. He has knockout power. He's learning how to fight. He's at a great camp. He's got Dean Thompson in his corner, like. You're just hating on that guy to be a hater. That's it. Like, I mean, it yeah. doesn't, yeah, like, I mean, his grappling might not be the best, but someone like that is going to learn. And they got heavy-ass hands. And how many fucking, how many guys have we seen like that that do well? I mean, especially at heavyweight. Like, I mean, you know, you, I, I I can't hate on the guy. I'm picking uh, him to actually win. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm picking him to win. So. I, I think he's definitely got this one. I, I I just I'm I'm rooting for him. I I want the heavyweight division to get a little little more interesting. 
You know, I want there to be some top dogs up there to, I mean, I'm tired of seeing fucking, uh, DC and, well, and, he, and, and Stipe, you know, I'm tired of seeing in well, The crazy thing is we went through like <clears throat> thinking about it. Yeah. You saw them. I took them out, but there was a, you know, when you think about Overeem and then uh, JDS, you know, Cain Velasquez didn't have the physique, but he was an athlete. Like mm -hmm. the way he moved, Cain yeah. Velasquez knew how to move. Yeah. You got Travis Brown. You got Andre Arvlowski, who moves well. Um, you know, and then you're going with Stipe. You got DC, amazing wrestler. Nganu coming up, this freak athlete. Like we don't see any of those body types like that anymore. We don't have we don't have any like buddy moving and like spectacular fashion or doing any of these fancy things. It's all pretty like mediocre down there. And that's what I think is boring. Yeah. Anthony wants to know how we feel about all these YouTube star fighters getting their shit. I, 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 I I'm wondering when it's going to end when I'm hoping, uh, Tyron Woodley fucking does some work against, uh, old Mr. Paul. I think that's a lot tougher of a fight. But yeah, I, I, I do. I, I, what scares me is I think of these fights where he fought Wonder Boy and like barely fucking moved. You know, I know it's well, a little tough for opponent. Know, I, but. You know, the, the, yes, that's the fear that we all have with Woodley. Is he going to be reluctant? You know, mm -hmm. but I think that when you put it in an environment where there's not takedowns and there's not all these things, and then the other thing to think about is Woodley fighting in that 30 foot cage and then you get put in a boxing ring. Mm -hmm. You got square corners. You got corner. Like, I don't, he's not going to be able to like, if he does two of those big jumps, he's into the ropes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like if Jake rushes him and he jumps, jumps, he's, he's bouncing off the ropes. So yeah. it's different in a round cage than a square ring. And that's something that's really underrated. Like if you think about it, <clears throat> a 20 foot ring square, right? You can put that 20 foot square in a 20 foot circle. And at the center of the ropes, you got like three feet back there. Yeah, there's that much more room. So just it being a ring versus a cage, not just the fact that it's smaller, mm -hmm. but I mean, even if it's a 28 foot ring, that's only 24 feet by 24 feet inside the ropes. That's six feet at each corner smaller and almost nine foot at the center each way smaller. So the action is definitely forced more. Uh, the, the crazy thing is that Woodley's bread and butter is this awkward overhand, right? that kind of mm -hmm. comes almost looking like he's going for an ankle pick or something. So there's not the there same setup. Yeah. Is, yeah. It's not the same setup, but at the same time, I mean, Jake Paul's money is just his right hand straight down the pipe. So it's gonna That being said, you know, reach wise, I think that Woodley can take that angle out more. That overhand, right. Is actually like a wide stepped out angle. So, yeah, but if it doesn't land, then straight down the pipe for Jake. But I mean, either way, I think that, uh, dude, dude whatever Jake's doing, he's really training. It, it's, it's, uh, I like the way he's talking now versus the way he was talking months ago. Yeah. Now he's just talking shit on UFC fighters, not getting paid enough. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But the, the, the antics before were really annoying. <clears throat> now the only stuff I'm seeing from him is like more like that, which, I have a little more respect for that. I'm like, okay, that's kind of fun to ruffle the feathers. Maybe we'll get some fighters paid. And yeah, I think that this fight truly gets to tell us like, uh, if, if Jake beats Woodley, then it's going, okay, okay, let's give him some boxers now. You know what I mean? Like he's obviously, yeah, he's a hard. UFC he's champion. I mean, you that's, can't that's discredit. A yeah. A win over Woodley is good. I mean, I don't care how washed up you say Woodley is you beat Woodley in a boxing match and you're, you're definitely, you know, doing something. So, I mean, <clears throat> all in all, I mean, there's only a couple of them, so it doesn't bug the fuck out of me. I mean, I think the rest of them are ridiculous. I mean, I think you know who's serious and who's not. Mm -hmm. And I never, I don't like hating on somebody. Like, I, the act of what they're doing, I, I've never hated on. Like, you're going in there promoting a fight and getting paid millions of dollars. That's hell smart. Yeah. I can't hate on that at all. Can't say But the way you go it. about it, the way you go about it, I might not like, but I'm not yeah. like, I, it's not like I'm ever going to hate it. I'm like, dude, just shut the fuck up or don't talk shit to, you know, the biggest problem that I have would be that they're boxing and he's talking shit to all these MMA fighters. Like, unless you're going to fight in a cage MMA, then don't talk shit to him. Yeah. Like playing by the same rules because 
that's the difference. Like, and then boxers try to use the same thing. Well, fucking hop in a boxing ring with me. Like, no, 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 no. See, you're t when you're talking about boxing, you're talking about removing all these strengths, yeah. like limited the rules. The closest thing to a street fight is going to be an MMA match. Yeah. So that's it. And I mean, I will take an MMA fighter over well, almost every one fucking of those bare knuckle fights might be closer. <laughs> no, not really. Because I mean, you're still not able to take a guy down. If if half those dudes got rocked, they just shoot for a takedown. Yeah. On the street. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, that's the whole thing. I mean, the moment you're in a clinch, the moment they tie up against the ropes and someone's dragging you down and pinning you in a corner and fucking smashing your head with knees yeah. in the face. Like, that's that part of it is very real. And when you're just going with the hand, dude, not that I'm not a fucking fan of boxing, not that I'm not a fan of bare knuckle. Like, it's so real. But I mean, uh, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm yeah. not, I'm not hating on it. I just, I just think readjust the shit talking a little bit. Yeah, but, no, I, yeah, I, I think it's how many heads are going to think knocked out tomorrow. I think it's good. Chad. I, I would like to see one of these. I, I, it sounds crazy, but I would like to see some shitty promotion. Do one of these fights as like an MMA match. I mean, well, fucking I mean, if, if somebody wants to try it, fucking give them a legit well, I mean, MMA fighter that it, knows how to wrestle and take people down. Good they at jiu-jitsu. Bellator, Bellator will make those matches. Yeah. Bellator will make it. Like, it's not like you got to be on a Bellator roster or anything like that. Bellator is a good yeah. feeder league. And trust me, any fucking Risen in Japan or whatever, I don't even know if Risen's still there. Yeah. But you got one one fighting and stuff. They'll, they'll make that happen, you know. But Bellator would be where you'd go for the money. So, I mean, I, I, I think it's uh, – I think it's – what I do like about it, to be honest, is the fact that somebody that's on that's out, Tyron Woodley cut by the UFC former one of the greatest welterweight champions of all time right now he's got a way to make like I said he's going to make more money in this fight than he did his entire career so I think that's yeah. amazing and you he, know what I mean that's I, sad though I mean it really is sad for the UFC I, that their it, champion Tyron Woodley it, he held the belt for is, a very long time it it is and it isn't though like I mean that I, I'm I'm all for the fighters getting paid more. It makes sense. But I get annoyed and disgusted with everybody complaining. Like, if you choose to wash bathrooms for $8 an hour, you chose to wash bathrooms for $8 yeah. an hour. You don't advocate that I should make. Look at. Look at the guy over. No, I think yeah. that you chose a sport and you know that the pay is not as high. Deal with it. You became yeah. a champion competition. And I mean, yeah, you know, the, the fighter to owner pay all this stuff fine, but there's uh, UFC MMA. It's not as old as, as boxing. And to be honest, yeah. there's not the same, like boxing is an Olympic sport and it's just, it is more world famous. That's why UFC was trying so hard to break all these boxing pay-per-view numbers. And now they're just starting to hit it and it's still only with like one person. So, I mean, until all these UFC pay-per-views are turning into all these major boxing matches and topping all those numbers and fine, but boxing is more known worldwide. And that's, that's the reason Conor McGregor makes so much money is because he brings an entire country with him, an entire country yeah. with him. So th the pay-per-views are high. When they showed that thing about when Conor McGregor comes to town, all the whales that are getting rooms and the, the so many private planes are flying in, you're bringing money. Boxing is this esteemed doesn't look that way recently. I hate the fucking commentating. I can't stand it. They are falling up. They're, Fall, boxing is falling apart not because the boxers are the athletes but the promotions but different they're promotions. too busy talking shit on mma guys to even acknowledge and appreciate their own sport that's going to be their detriment why are you so focused on something else like shut up love your sport embrace it and commentate yeah. on that but with that said i mean it's a very gentlemanly thing that that's been going on forever and and the casinos and the betting and and it's an Olympic sport and it's tied in and rooted so deeply that there's way more money vested there. And it's, and it is the Ollie act and the different things that yeah. happen. And, you know, you got a few different promoters versus the UFC. It's, it's different that you have a promoter versus an organization like golden boy promotions, Yeah, you know, and the UFC, you know, it's, it's a brand. 
So, and I mean, if the UFC would have been paying all these fighters all this money that whole time, they wouldn't be where they're at and have built it into what they built it into and it sold the company for $4 billion to all these investors. So to get to the level of boxing, you have to go through the hard road of, yes, all the owners making more money and exploded into this crazy brand. Where it's in 10, 20 years, yeah, UFC dudes are going to be making hella more money than boxers. They will. Oh, sure. They will, but everyone's looking at this boxing heyday and everyone's trying to look and compare this Jake Paul and this YouTube thing. And, oh, you get more if you go to Bellator. Yeah, because they only have a couple guys. They're See, only I, paying a couple guys. Anthony All their money is getting boring with having the, like the same top guys like Canelo and and, and Mayweather well, and fucking, it's you know, the you same the thing. top uh, guys. There's their stars are burnt out and, and, you know, Lomachenko was great, but they just don't have, it's because the product again, the product, the product, the product, it's not that just the athletes, it's not the competitive level. I mean, it's not the competitive level. It is the product and the way that it's put out there to the public and boxing lost its lure. Like it just, they're just not able to build these athletes anymore from like, you know, Javante Davis, like trying to be this mate, like they've turned off so many of the public that boxing is almost more, it's down gritty. And like all the other countries are huge into boxing so much more because they know it. And it's just taken a different turn. It's on its way out. And like I said, the commentators and everybody, dude, when you go to the boxing on Bleacher Report, it's all it's talking about is like Jake Paul and if an MMA guy is going to do it, they don't respect their own sport anymore. They're trying to get American viewers and American hits by bringing MMA into their sport. That yeah. shows you that they're failing. That shows you that they're failing because they're not able, they're not the big dogs anymore. So the UFC has got to keep doing what they're doing putting all this money into promotions, putting all this money into different minds and different think tanks and different events and building these epicenters and building these performance institutes and all these things that they're doing that are obviously working because fighter yeah. pay is going up. And in 10 years, yeah, like it sucks if you're a guy right now and you're not getting all that. But as soon as they cave to one, they got to pay everybody. And the moment they pay everybody all this money because it's a giant roster with a bunch yeah. of stars. Why is the UFC fun? What's Anthony talking about? Same couple stars. Yeah. What does UFC have right now? A bunch of stars in every weight class. You can't pay all those guys fucking 10, 30 million dollars, no. or you're not gonna have any money left in the company. You're gonna run out of money, and then the bar gets there's set a so business high aspect to it. It's it it is, it's all a business. The same way the fighters want more money, everybody else wants more money, but you gotta get to that point. You have to build that brand high enough to where your funds that you're able to distribute are that grand, and they're getting there. And but I'm just happy, like, if you look at old school UFC fights, right, those guys barely had a fucking corner. And if you've been to, like, an underground or old school, you like, MMA event, that's kind of how it is. They barely have a corner. Fucking no one to wrap their I've hands. I've cornered multiple dudes that fucking trained in from two states away, showed up without a corner to fight, and Moses right? is like, hey, will you corner this guy with Morgan? Okay. Yeah. 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 It, it happens all the time. And that was the early days of the UFC. But by early days, we meet about 10, 15 years ago. Like that wasn't that long. That's that's and, what I'm saying. It's so young. You're talking, you're talking 97, you know, 93, and, like yeah. 93 when the UFC erupts on the scene. I mean, it's 28 years ago. Like that's, it's infant. It is a, and now infant. we're at the point. Now we're at the point, Chad, to where the UFC is giving you food preps. They're giving you fucking the probably the top guys get chefs. You know, what, they give you what every is, supplement. What's the first that you thing that take. happens in a job, right? You start making so much money in a job, and you what get is upgraded, that? nicer uniforms, Incentives. nicer cars, you know, okay. fucking things That's, like that. Yeah, you got full coverage insurance, you got all this stuff. All these perks, they're they're taking them. They're they don't have to look for their own sponsors now. A lot of guys are mad about that because they were hustlers. But for the whole thing of it, they're getting them monster. They're getting them. What about those guys know, that weren't hustlers? Now, you know that were struggling. Exactly, fucking, they were all losing. Yeah. They were all losing. Exactly, they're getting ripped off by managers. Nobody's talking about that. Most of their managers were making all the money. The managers yeah. would go get monsters and the fighters had no clue because the guys that weren't hustlers they weren't managing themselves so yeah that, that nobody wants to you know bring that up but the sport is an infant and 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 good business does not 
it does not evolve by giving everyone what they want. No, you would have nothing. You would have nothing, especially and, as young as the yeah. I mean, is. and then someone's gonna go, oh, but just give John Jones. Oh, but just give. Oh, but just, that that shit and, never stops. And you and can that's almost why argue the people. Chad, you sorry, sorry to cut you off, but you could almost argue that the UFC is not from the '90s because when Dana and for the Fertitas took over, that was a whole other world. Bro, so it's you not even say, it's it's, it's, it's then the Fertitas take over, the Fertitas sell out. Mm -hmm. Now it's a management company, so there's all these transitions, and the company's just getting bigger and bigger. And I mean, this is the thing that I'm saying: when you got in the fucking sport, when John Jones got in the sport, nobody was making what he's making now. No, but. He's mad because somebody in another sport mm -hmm. in a different promotion is making more. Shut up. Like yeah. that, I mean, like, and if you're going to have those conversations, have them privately going public in my going public does nothing. You're just yeah. pissing people off. You're pissing people off. Like, I mean, like I, yes, I want be, and I mean, this makes me sound like I'm not on the, the, the same page of fighters getting paid more. I am, but it's going to take time and don't yeah. complain publicly and bitch and moan. And I'm not going to fight anymore. Okay. Don't get paid zero. Yeah. Wow. You're yeah. making so much more money well, by, and, by not doing the sport. It, it is so fucking ridiculous to me that you're, you're, you're working on a, you signed a contract. You're saying, okay, well, I'm not going to sign another one. So, okay, go into free agency. Oh, you got three fights left on your contract. Honor your fucking contract. If you well, rip it up thing, and negotiate, okay. But the other thing too, I, is like, I mean, you could have easily went the boxing route and made boxing money. Yeah. Or you, you wanted, couldn't have, if you're, 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 yeah. you're bitching because somebody, or you couldn't, you, you, why don't you do it? Yeah, exactly. You know, Oh, I, I could have, I could have done this or I could have done that. Okay. Now you're just fucking every Joe blow around the corner. Yeah. That's what I mean about it. The whole thing is just piss poor reflection. Like, yes, I believe they deserve more. I believe they're going to get more, but you got to work towards that. And you know that dude, over the last five years, fighter pays went up. So it's so fucking crazy for these guys to all start talking about like, they're not going to fight. So you chose this sport. You, when you chose the sport, pay was lower when you chose it but now that you're successful in the sport you're mad pay was higher than when you joined but you're still mad yeah. like you 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 know what you signed up for you know exactly what you signed up for yeah you know it's like i don't i'm not going to go to mcdonald's be like i'm hella happy to work here but i should make 60 an hour because this doctor's making 60 an hour i should make 150 <laughs> an hour because the doctor is like, you're not a fucking doctor you work at fucking mcdonald's yeah. And McDonald's is or a hobby life franchise. But I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. But no, that's just like the uh um fuck it's 1 a.m. What's up, Anthony? Good seeing you, brother. Thanks for always tuning in. You know what I'm saying? But, who you um, got who you got in yeah. this main event tomorrow? I, I, I know it's a big one. It's the trilogy fight. This is Connor's first trilogy, and I'm really I'm thinking that's gonna have a lot to do with how the results go. And Connor's usually better in a rematch. I'm excited to see this. I personally think Connor's going to come out and put on a performance. I know there's a little bit of shit talk. There's a little bit of getting in each other's heads. Oh, I didn't donate the money. Oh, I'm throwing a kick at the weigh-ins. All that stuff is leading right into Connor's perfect fucking setup. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm still going for Poirier. I'll still stay with my fourth round. I, I actually think Poirier might get it earlier now because Connor's going to come out so hungry. I, I could see Poirier getting it in the third or even, even the second again. Um, I'm still going Poirier. So I think that um, after seeing the weigh-ins and everything, the, the only thing that worries me is uh, at the press conference, Connor definitely got in Poirier's head for a little bit too. I mean, he really, you could see Poirier trying to remind himself, like, just chill. Don't fucking bite. Don't mm -hmm. bite on this shit. And Connor just trying to do it everything could abide on it. Connor's wife, a man, you're Julie's uh, trying everything. But when Poirier popped back with what he did, the mental warfare aspect of it is definitely Connor's trying to, to get Poirier pissed. Yes. And I could see that Poirier is pissed. Like it did work, you know, but I think Poirier was pissed the last fight. Yeah. I just think that he knows not to run his mouth. 
I think that Poirier is just wise enough to know that like the talk is done in the cage. Don't get sucked in. Don't fuck your mental up. I think that Poirier's mind right now is really solid. I mean, if it wasn't when Connor kicked at him, he would have lost it. And he Whoa. laughed. That confidence so that, you get from that last win the, really fucking has well, to help. Well, I mean, right? So I was worried about that part too. Like, is Poirier over? But I truly see Poirier as right now being really centered. Yeah. You know? he, he Yes, he's confident because he knocked him out. But he's still aware of the danger. Yes, uh, he's pissed off by what Connor's saying. But he, he knows he's bit on that before and got too carried away. So I think Poirier is, um, is going to be Poirier. Yeah. And I think that's good. I think Connor Austin brought up something that I wasn't thinking about. Connor's first time getting knocked out, and he's yeah. wearing it. He is wearing it like an insecure child. He's so oh, yeah. he's mad about it. Sleeve. He's pissed. I'm gonna rile him up. I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say that. I'm gonna post this. I'm gonna do that. I mean, he is going out of his way like never before to try and piss Dustin Poirier off and pull pull him out of his game, which yep. the way that he's doing it this time does scream like insecurity. He is, he seems like he's so desperate to get Poirier to break character that he believes Poirier is going to beat him if Poirier doesn't break. Mm -hmm. Like, I think Connor... Connor's now like, like, oh, fuck, he knocked me out. I got a little confident. He was so calm. I need, basically, Connor's in the mindset of, I need to get him out of his game so that I can be in my game. Like, yeah, it's not just like before he was on his game and yeah. he take people out of his game. Right now, it seems like he's so, his main focus isn't being on his game. Like, I, I, I think he is going to come out hot and I do believe you know, uh, the same thing if Connor wins, it's first or second, but I, I don't think he's going to do it. I think that, uh, I, I think he might get overzealous and that's yeah. why I could almost see Poirier finishing it sooner because if Connor gets overzealous and does close distance too quick and mm -hmm. Poirier finds that lead hook and if Poirier finds his range quick because Connor's so willing to stay in it, see Connor was great staying out of range, popping in, popping out, popping in, popping out, you know, springing you know yeah. springing very springy in out in out not that power in the left plan, too not planning in the, well and not yeah. planning in the pocket and training no. like and he did that last fight even though he's successful sometimes he's planning you know plan that's why his leg is getting he's planning trading in the pocket and yeah i think that's a um also shows like the reason he's not as fast and precise is because he, he's planning so much when before it's so he was so loose mm -hmm. and springy that it was just, yeah what happened like you said that? that precision he just you think it's the extra weight fight. Or, or or what what do you no, think? No, I just be? think that I think it comes with age and a mindset. And I think that after training so much boxing for Mayweather and wanting to get more boxing heavy, that he I think someone like him is such a head case to where he's like constantly analyzing, like, ooh, boxing, like you know, like he's always trying to work on something and he didn't he didn't understand that he was great. I don't think he knew that he was great because he's always talking about he's just getting better. And mm -hmm. I think that he trains in an environment that, you know, that isn't, he's not at like one of these gyms where, uh, you know, like look at Poirier with Masvidal and Colby yeah. at the time and look at ATT dog. You are in there with top 10 of every division. Yeah. Champions, Con the champions not. all around the gym. AKA. Connor, Connor, to, thing. Connor to me truly surrounds himself with yes men. You know, and when he was great, it worked. And then I think he, uh, I think he's turned into coaching his coaches. I mean, McGregor fast. Like, I think he drinks so much of his own Kool-Aid that he knows what he needs to get better at. Yeah. It's not his coaches saying this. His coach, I don't think Kavanaugh would have changed anything. You could hear Kavanaugh getting ignored with him. Like, yeah. he didn't need to change anything. He just needed to keep doing what he was doing. And he didn't do it. It's yeah. not like he got more wrestling based after he lost to Khabib. You know, he's mm -hmm. just going in this boxing thing and then, the Cerrone fight was was beautiful, but it was 13 yeah. seconds, so we don't really know. We don't yeah, really know. Was, like he exploded, he came out ready. He exploded. Donald Cerrone's known to start He's a slow, slow starter, but way, yeah. I mean, you know, Connor was violent and quick. That's cool, but we didn't see much. Now that last fight, we seen him very heavy on the front foot, really just trying to box and not as quick. He wasn't quite as fast, you know. And that see, could and be that's way, the problem it could with be Connor, age. Though. It could be so much. 
That 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 really is the problem though. If you think even back in the day, he looked great. He fought what three four rounds against Chad Mendez, and then fucking smoked Jose Aldo in fucking thirteen seconds. So it's like you see yeah. good fights with him where they're going, but, you know. And, and he and slept. It's a war he slept and Jose. He slept Jose moving backwards yeah. on a timing shot, mm -hmm. and that's what he always said: precision beats speed, and speed beats power. You know, or mm -hmm. uh, speed. Yeah, well, however fuck yeah. he said it, I can't, I can't repeat it right right now. But that's was his thing, and it's true. And his liver kicks that he would throw, you know, he had this dynamic, rangy, springing in and out, real, pop, pop, you know, like precise. And the last fight was, I mean, he was doing good. He did have a lot of success. I mean, he was, he was doing fine. Then he got caught, but he just got so comfortable in this pocket I, and not you know losing his and he looked he looked tired in the second round i think he the way definitely has a slowed lot to down do with it man we don't we don't we underestimate how how yeah. he's gone across all these weight classes 55 45 well, 70 well, and he he's really i mean he never had a we never seen him with like a crazy gas tank yeah like we didn't you know no. three rounds versus max holloway but I mean, Nate, he was tired. Yeah. Um, I think three that rounds was, you know, against he, that Mendez, was, three or four. Was way, um, I, I think he put him away in the second or third. It was three, huh? I think he put him I think it was round. three, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. The beginning of third. But, but yeah, but I he mean, did that on a blown ACL too. He's never, he's never looked like a cardio machine. Uh -uh. And, and he's got a little more weight now. And he's definitely, like, I relate his muscle type to, like, bodybuilder. Like, it's definitely a... It's definitely like muscle. It's yeah. not like lean. Like when you look at Kamaro Usman, that's not bodybuilder weight. That's no. super lean yeah. out muscle, you know? And George like St. Pierre, Connors same is like, thing. Yeah. Well, even, you know, St. Saint Pierre's, you know, midsection, but his, his St. Pierre was just, St. Pierre was just carved different. out of granite. Was his body type Rogan was more said. like a sprinter. <laughs> yeah, I mean St. Pierre was something different. Like I can't even go there. But um, but yeah, I just think that you know where Connor's at, I think that he kind of became his own coach. I think he became in charge of this is what I want to do. I think that he trains with a lot of partners that he's definitely better than. So that's what I was re I watched this Poirier fight rematch a lot of times, and you know, he's just not good at getting hit. You know, he's yeah. not good at getting hit, and I don't think he's putting himself in these situations to get hit a bunch. And I don't think that's what they say is beyond making it and being successful and having money. It's that when you're not, when you, it's sometimes it might not even be your own fault. It might be everyone is so scared to lose you that they tell you yes. Yeah. Your coaches, your cornermen, your sparring partners, like, you know, I think that if someone knocked out Connor in a sparring session, I think he'd be a little bitch about it. I do. I think that if Connor got slept by one of his guys, he'd be fucking, he'd be pissed about it. Like, yeah. I, I don't, because the way he's acting after this knock, like, well, you know, I, I he's going to be like that, that because he fucking put you know, Polly Ma Ma Malinaggio or whatever the fuck his name is. He put him on blast and released sparring footage and, and really fucking buried the guy over that. So, yeah. And I don't think he would have, he would have been pissed if that got done to him. Yeah. And I mean, I think that, I think that what we're truly seeing is how, like, we've seen a hungry, talented, springy individual. And don't get me wrong, Connor could still win this, but I'm speaking of the psyche of the individual is I've grown to dislike him more and more. The Khabib shit talking. Now I'm seeing this and now just realizing like, he's kind of a snaky dude. Like he, mm -hmm. he, um, to the, the donation thing and. The way he handled the, what got me wasn't that he pulled the donation. I thought that was funny. I thought that was very witty and clever. Like it's a donation, not a debt. And then for him to donate it to the boys and girls club steer, I thought that was pretty cool. But when he said, by the way, the fight's off, I'm like, okay, you're a spoiled little bitch now. Like, you yeah. know, and that's the way, like, I'm the money for on this. Like, he's dude, you're not a champion too. anymore. You're not, you won, you won one time at 155 pounds you won the title you did not you did not defend your 145 pound title you did not defend your 155 pound title you've won one fight at 155 pounds okay arguably yeah. you lost both the fights to nate and yeah you stopped donald cerrone but sorry none of those guys were top five when you beat him no none of them
And, and Nate was not top five I, when Connor beat him, and Donald was not top five when he beat him. He did start fucking Eddie Alvarez, but that was it. And I mean, Eddie was Alvarez nothing, really so. was just a title holder. He wasn't a champion. He was a title holder. You know what I mean? He got the belt because the champ, you know. That's it, all Connor. If you're going to. It was just if you're going to say that. Him, you know what I mean? Same thing with Connor. Like, and no, I think I mean, Connor did this to same, himself. Same Connor was just a title holder. Yeah. Connor was a title holder. Connor never defended it. And that's the biggest thing in sports is they always say what makes a champion is defending his belt. Yeah. And I know that he knows that he just doesn't want to acknowledge it. When you're as big of a fan of fighting as he was and is coming up, yeah. you know, you know, you know, you never defended your belt. You can't look at him. You got fucked one up of those on in cocaine. The things, right? You caused the, yeah, you, you got exactly. He knows it, bro, because he did a lot of drugs. He's done a lot of coke. Trust me. That motherfucker's probably cried in the mirror with hookers in the background mm -hmm. going, God damn it. Did I, why didn't I reach my potential? Why didn't Fights I defend Khabib that 45 choked. pound title? Why didn't I defend that 55 pound title? Why did I take didn't these stupid fights with your, Nate? <laughs> yeah. So, and, and when the, like I said, just seeing the turn that he did, like to know that he was like nice against cowboy respectful, then nice against Poirier respectful. And the moment you get knocked out, you're going to turn into a fucking piece of shit again. Yeah. Oh, you're a fucking punk. Like, that's all it is. Like, as long as I'm winning, I will be nice. A few years ago, Chad, that's you it. were riding Connor's dick. I was never rode Connor. Yes, dick you rode life. his dick to the fucking grave. Man. I said he's a you real fucking, talent. Oh, oh, McGregor fast. Oh. I've yeah, never Chad. Been on McGregor Don't fucking fast program either. Did someone just pop you're through there? Of, what was what was that? I seen right something now. in what the bottom of the screen just pop through. Like, what? is your garage haunted? No, what was in my wine bottle? Oh, okay. Yeah. It looked like someone's yeah. hand. I thought somebody's hand in there was fucking coming in. I thought you were getting a, a BJ or a HJ the nah, whole time. Victoria's working in Elk River. If I'm getting a BJ <laughs> on camera right now, I'm getting fucking murdered on Sunday night. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Fuck. Well, Chad, we better wrap this thing up, brother, man. This has been yeah. a good one. Um, Damn good, man. I, 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 I'm really hoping we're back. I don't want to tell everyone we are, but I'm hoping we are, baby. And and we're back, baby. Let's episodes every week. We're definitely gonna be working on some guests. Like we we have them lined up. We just gotta hit them up and and align the stars, right? We have tons of guests ready to go. Yep. <laughs> so with that being said, I just gotta say thank you to Calaveras River Farms for the shower. Before I got on the air today, I used the fucking soap. That's I I swear to God, Chad, it was like a exfoliating because the coffee grounds started like scrubbing all the shit off my skin right so i'm like all right let's keep it up dude it. It, it felt great um it smelled good hit them up calaveras river farms um they have a shop you can buy soaps lotions uh deodorants they got um price shampoos coming soon who knows man they're on top of it not only that, they have the best eggs you can get. My wife only likes Calaveras River Farms. All the products eggs. too are homemade, so yes, made with same. love, dude. You can really feel that, like in it, like it's. You can see, like, wow, when you buy deodorant from a store, it's completely different. You're like, okay, whatever. But when you know that Erica worked hard and picked each and every leaf to put in this deodorant blend, and are you gonna tell? Are you gonna say what you were saying before we went live? Dave was saying that he could feel Erica's love in the bar of soap everywhere he, he was touching, that he could just feel all the love and the hard work that she put into that bar and soap everywhere he was rubbing. It's you're okay, not going to say that now that we're like, huh? hey, man, I, if, Look at, I think Dave's blushing. <laughs> I think he's blushing. I mean, I, make for a fun is barbecue. there butter in here? Is there butter in here? <laughs> oh, oh man shit. watch what's well, gonna now what's gonna happen is bobby's gonna be like hey bro erica made these soaps especially for you just want to say shout out bobby's gonna find out what dave's allergic to put it in the homemade soaps give it to dave so he just fucking what the fuck is going on <laughs> why is this one made with uh, uh poison oak <laughs> that, he's like there were these green leaves they were so awesome bro. i thought it was cilantro i got it I kind of had a bad reaction. <laughs> My bowel is so itchy and swollen. Oh, man. 
But Calaver, oh, but, Calaver's River yeah, Farms has sorry. some good stuff out there right now. Great stuff. Great lotions. Rub them all over your body. Chad, rub them all over. They're they're great for it, man. They really are. I haven't yeah. got to use them yet. We give them to, we give all the uh, soaps to all my customers. But she does too. If you're a business out there and you want to do like cool thank you gifts or anything like that, they do. They have custom made labels that will uh, include your company logo and everything like that. We ordered a bunch from her. Absolutely amazing. I um yeah, it's pretty cool. And to be honest, I mean, if you're like I said, any type of complimentary baskets for any business or any sales or anything that you have. Uh, I would highly recommend doing something like that. It's been great for our business and it's really cool because like I said, they're, they're homemade. Everybody's loving and appreciating that right now. And there's something kind of odd about like when you give somebody, it, it's funny, we do a thank you card, a bottle cleaner, and we give them like this soap and it's like, oh, this is homemade soap. You know, or, you know, my friend's wife, Erica, she makes them and uh, you know, oh, look at the custom label. They, yeah, that's what they care about like more than anything. So, I yeah. mean, I'm just throwing that out there too for any businesses or anything like that. They're, uh, you know, they're, they're priced well. And, uh, yeah, it's good. It's, it, it's just good too. And, and you can find them on Instagram. Um, that's probably the best way to find them. Instagram, Facebook, social media, hit them up, uh, Calaveras river farms. Um, they will, you'll find links to their other pages and how you can get on their shop. And, and I believe they might have a store on Etsy or something like that too coming soon. Or if it's not already running and if you're ever good enough to get on the waiting list for the, the beef, they auction off, they grow some of the best beef there in Calaveras rivers County. So the Scottish Highlanders from prize winning bull, uh, Finnegan, that's like, I mean, the, the beef beast. they have, they don't, they don't have a ton of head. So they literally auction off what, when they have it and you get on a waiting list. But if you're lucky enough to get on that list and get some of that beef, it is top quality and you're, yeah. you're, you're winning. So, yeah, not only that, we got friends over at uh, Monroy's original hot sauce. Of course, he's been with us since day one, always hooking it up. Every fight party comes through with a couple bottles of hot sauce ready to go. We, we, Every once in a while, we'll dump the Kraken on people's tacos when they're not looking and watch them fucking lose their shit. So check them out. If you just want to have fun and prank somebody, get the Death by Kraken sauce. Dump it all over their tacos when they're, you know, stepping out or not paying attention. And, and they, yeah, you'll have a hell of a time. Plus, mango habanero and pineapple tequila are fire. Threw them on some enchiladas last night. They were amazing. Amazing. Death. So check them out. My Roy's original hot sauce. Put some of that death by cracking on the tip of that bow day. So when someone hits that spray, <laughs> they get that death by cracking right in the booty hole. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, man. Oh, That's the death by cracking for real, Jack. I got all squirmy over here. Like, oh, don't let it hit me. Oh, <laughs> That's awful. And, and, and last but not least, we got some friends over in Florida at uh, Retro Grappler. Dot com check them out they got awesome rash guards they got all your jujitsu supplies needs they got your gear they do custom gear too so hit them up on instagram retro grappler shop um amazing people over there they hooked it up they they always do and they do amazing work there's a lot of talent in drawn that company. designs man they're drawing all that stuff it's fucking badass they're good guys yeah. A lot of talent there, man. And so check them all out. Everyone, thank you for tuning in. This is episode 66 of Sinner and Saint. This is your boy Dave and Chad over here. We're both Yay. alive after Elk River choking incidents. We're here. Choking, to fireworks. <laughs> fuck. Yeah. I, we're here, man. We're here Mushroom, to stay. Mushrooms. Crying Mushrooms. Kids. Yeah. A lot of shit went down, man. My most traumatizing thing that I talk about where the kids crying. It wasn't, it wasn't fucking, it wasn't, you know, like choking and nearly dying. It was like being trapped in a room with two fucking kids crying. Oh my God. <laughs> and that was exactly the look that was on your face, Chad. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Enjoy the fights tomorrow. Let us know how you enjoyed them. Um, send us some pictures, uh, comment on our page let us know we'll send pictures of what we're doing too and and we'll just have us a, a fucking great ass time fucking a thank you guys for tuning in man we appreciate it and uh like i said we're gonna be as consistent as we can be but you guys are hanging in there with us anyway and you know that's what we're all about you know what i mean if we if we were perfect it wouldn't be center in the saint it'd just be called the saint 
that's just and that's boring. not even a good name. Yeah. No, it's that's insane. boring. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. We love the support. Have a good one. We out. We out. <laughs>